Okay. All right, let's follow the meeting to order. But, uh, yeah. First on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Are there any modifications to the agenda tonight? Or are we good to move forward? Good on my end. Okay. I'm good. Laptop, I'll get them. Thank you. Just need a motion to approve the agenda as written. So moved. I'll move. Okay. So I'll move. <laughs> you got seconds? Okay. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. So we got a couple of appointments tonight. Um, Kurt is here tonight, and as well as Sally. So we will move forward with Sally's number one. So I'll give you the in the packet. And I provided Sally with the information that I had um, that I had provided you. She did give us the original road survey, which I had not included in your packet. So um, obviously, you can tell in Sally's letter that they that her concern, their concern is that we re located the road by a foot and a half or 18 inches um, in the packet I provided you that I also gave a copy to, to Sally is the first three responses that we made to this. Um, I also, so it was 11 pages of documents or so that Sally dropped off. Um, I included the pictures that Tim Mills took during the water project. Um, I gave you a copy of the easement deed that Derek signed which has a map showing our right of way on it. Um, during before the water project, he came in and met with Tim and I. Um, obviously, we've addressed the this issue three times previously. We have no statutory obligation to resurvey the road um, because the term significantly altered uh, is defined in statute as a major physical change, uh, such as going from one lane to two lane. So um, the remedy here would be if we're not going, to, if this town isn't going to relocate, the road is that Sally would and Derek would need to take us to court, and, and we'd have to let a judge decide. Okay. So oh, this is oh sorry, Sally, I forgot to tell him this part. Right, this is the sir. This is the bigger portion we that Sally gave. I she brought us a copy, and we're going to give it back to her when we're done. But she, this is what it, I only took a copy and shrunk it. But this is what Sally had dropped off. There's just two copies of it. This might be easier to read because it's colored. But they're the same, correct? Yeah. So if you want to pass that around, I just. But but they're going back to Sally. You do. I'm just saying if you want to see the full, the bigger version, I had to shrink it. So. And you know what are we because we are with the survey with the eighteen seventy. Can't hear what Sally's saying. Okay. Yeah, that's what I wondered. Can you Paul can't hear? Okay, Sally, can you get closer to the mic? Because Paul can't hear you. He's online. He's a um, can we move the mic? So I think, so Finn is going to move the mic. Thank you, Finn. Thank you. Yeah, Sally's soft-spoken. Not really. <laughs> I do have a loud voice. Oh, okay. Um, can you hear her now, Paul? Can you hear now? I think right you need to... <clears throat> can you hear me, Paul? Yeah. Okay, so... Thank you. This was part of, of one of the pictures featured in a calendar that was done on the town of Bethel a few years back. And of course it was the Edson house. It's now referred to as the little Richardson house, um, but it's been sold and it's up above Merrill mechanics right on main street. So this picture was highly interesting to Derek and I, because we now own the big house right across the road from here. Um, and as you study it, um, well, it didn't take us too long to realize. And so when I say significant changes, um, you could take a look at the roadbed and I think it would be hard not to agree that that's a pretty significant change. What so the house has a year. You know, specifically, I don't know, okay. but we can look at the dress of the folks. It's called the Edson House, Mr. Edson, came to Bethel, I believe in 1889 or somewhere around in there. 
if this is his family, which I always thought it was because the boys kind of look just like the picture of him that's in the historical book. But um, so the, the house has a, a porch on the front. Bear in mind, but a lot of the original features, for instance, the corner of the house and even this pillar on the porch overhang here is still there. So you can see these two features in relation to the edge of the road. That's what I mean when I say significant changes. Okay, so that's um, a very special picture. Another old picture here, it's called the Wheeler House. Mr. Wheeler bought the house in 1866 and it remained in his family, passing from brothers, sisters, uncles, whatever, for 124 years right up until 1990 when Nancy Boone bought it and created the five apartments, which it no longer is, it's a single family home. Um, so Janet Burnham looked at this and I asked her, you know, what do you think about a date on it? She saw the, the uh, telegraph lines and said, it's probably around 1900. So as much as I can tell you, this is the stone wall that is referred to in my presentation here on the lawn. Okay. I guess you could call that significant changes as well. Anyway. So the thing about the survey, and actually at this point I have quite a few things, but you see my copy? Mm -hmm. This is the actual copy that Keith laid down on his desk and pushed across to me, but never said a word. So I took it home and, and again, you know, the 20 foot roadway kept ringing in my ears. What do you mean? What do you, so um, I would just point out that it might be a good idea to bear in mind when you're hearing what I say and when you're looking at this, that middle of the road, those four little road words, middle of the road are the important or is the important idea. So this note slash letter that I wrote to the town of Bethel is dated October 12th, 2020. And I believe the road, the water project may have started. I'm, I'm gonna no, say, yeah. No, because it flooded in April of 2019. So I don't think the road project started until I approached. I think it was twenty. I approached the um, utilities manager <laughs> and suggested, based on Derek's reading of the original survey, and he studied surveying for his forestry degree. Middle of the road. So remember those four words. So to whom it may concern. Now this is twenty twenty. And this is after I had approached the utility manager and asked or suggested that the road be resurfaced, surveyed based on this picture. And please consider at this time our request to have the roadbed at 32 Avon Drive moved over to the original layout, see attached. And what I had attached was that survey that you're looking at. Since the roadbed is completely dug up, and down to grade for today's water project. I'm pretty sure it was already started. When I it could have been. I when I wrote, wrote I, I, I just remember that it flooded in April 2019, and I started as town manager in term in June, and then in October of that year. So I, I and I know that the project design had been underway, but I don't remember when we broke ground. Yeah, so my apologies. I just don't remember. And then I, you know. Based on our very strong research and what we had already done, we felt pretty strongly. So um, Derek's a little bit surprised to hear this last sentence, or let it be known that we reserve the right to an attorney representing us against any damages. And we have both signed it, pardon? Well, let's just, um, it's not just the water project. So we were called, we were ringing the bell and calling attention. Yeah. And he, and his response to me was, who's going to pay for it? So I walked away and put good faith that the project would go forward. Okay. 
So the next page, which is four, is dated 2022. And so- And that's I all said, the stuff that's in their packet, right? Right, right, that they've already- So read. I said, Derek, because he's very sensitive about um, injuring the feelings of the town. Yeah. So I said, don't worry about that last sentence right. because we decided to go on our own. And he chose a surveyor by the name of Tim Short out of Montpelier. Phone number and address is there. And Derek ended up spending $2,344 to find what you are now going to also find out. So did you give me those large prints? They're right here. Yeah. So the so question is, is, you showed us a- I assumed you were brought me into the town office a, a year ago or so, yeah. and I unrolled it in front of Kelly, and well, the other copy has the red line on it. And I said, Derek went ahead and had the road surveyed. I said, the red line shows the center of the road. So my question is this, you showed us a bill that a uh, handwritten bill from Tim Short and you guys wrote on it how much you paid, but yet the survey you submitted to the town is Brenda Renfrew's survey, not your survey. It, it is the survey of the road. And it, what no, this surveyor survey, did- That is Brenda Renfrew's survey that you wrote on. No. That is not an official survey of the road. And Derek mentioned that before. today. It is what we paid 200, 2,300, whatever. If that is what we he took the survey, Brenda, which are yours. I'm just asking. He may I just explain yeah. the way it was done? It was done through computer at his office. Where's the survey? So what you do, you take these. I'm calling it. I called them coordinates in front of Derek. They're not coordinates, but basically it tells you um, in degrees and directions um, and rods. So right. you, with your instruments, and it's not the same instruments that surveyors use today, but these numbers apply to the roadbed, which is what the surveyor did. It's a survey. It doesn't matter that it's Brenda Renfrew's. And in this case, it's very appropriate because as it turns out, the roadbed, has moved to our side of the road. So, so wrote on that survey. This isn't writing. These are the lines that represent these numbers. And who did it on? Tim Short. On a copy of Brenda's. That's survey. right. Okay. Yeah. We had both the copy in the house. He took it with him, enlarged it, mm -hmm. and applied those numbers to. Okay. Did he ever physically do anything on the property? I. I can't answer that. He did not. Well, it's a different type of surveying than what we paid to have our property surveyed. And that was done with instruments that I'm more familiar with. But this type of surveying is different than what surveyors are doing today. But you can still take these numbers and interpret them. And that is what he did. The, the challenge we have, the challenge we have is is we don't know that that was done by that survey. So being, so you have what, you, what you submitted was Brenda Renfrew's survey and it has some additional markups on that. Where? I can show you. The ones that you're talking about, the line and those things, we didn't know who made those lines. The, the challenge is, is typically a surveyor will create their own survey plot and they will stamp it and certify that that is theirs. Yes, and Derek mentioned that last night. But there's nothing like okay. If you put us put yourself in our position, so we are presented this map that is not this short. There's no name of that person on the map, right? So the only name on that is Brent Brenda Renfrew's and the surveyor that had conducted that survey. So any other changes to that survey we don't know that that was done by a licensed individual okay. at this point they would have to create their own and they would have to stamp it saying that that was theirs and what their credentials are to do that 
Because right now, I mean, not saying that happened, but we don't know if, if you drew on it or if he drew on it, it or if he drew on it or somebody else drew on it. Right. It's appropriate that it be applied to this roadbed. Sure, because you share the same road, you and Brenda, but but you just gave us a copy of a bill. So, but we didn't get anything. We didn't get a letter from Tim Short. We didn't get any document with Tim Short's name on it other than the bill. But I can reach out to Tim Short if you are saying that. Yes. And from what I remember, because this is 2022, he came to the house to go over what he had done and the results of the survey of the roadbed. Mrs. Ringview's survey is filed at the town office. Yeah. Ours is not, and it doesn't need to be, but right. the roadbed is the same. Okay. Okay. So Mr. Short is a licensed surveyor, and Mr. Short was describing to me some committee that he's a part of that represents the surveying surveyors of Vermont. I can contact so he, Mr. Short. There you go. So what was not part of the first time I visited concerning the significant alterations was this document showing the uh, old original survey applied to the roadbed. And for us to look at having lost that much footage, it's pretty. Yeah. So I can reach out to Mr. Short and see and speak to I him. I don't think we thought that we were going to go any further with it when we kind of finished with okay. him. Okay, well, let me, I can have a conversation with um, Mr. But, Short. And Derek mentioned that as I was going over with him. Oh, and by the way, most of you may know he's not here tonight because of his work um, with the uh, flood that happened the other night, the railroad up in Barnet. And it's overnight and it's been the last month or so. But I think it's, and you know, if I'm going to just yeah. read what you all heard, and I don't have a date on this, but Derek approved these words and concurred with them. Oh, do you have something? It'll just take a few minutes. Oh, hang on. I, Paul might have a question. Yeah, yeah um, I have a question. Why would he have not used your survey as opposed to Renfro's survey to figure out where the roadbed went? Okay, thank you for the question. Our survey is secure at home. The roadbed is also been surveyed by Tim Short, and they basically turned out the same because her surveyor and our surveyor both did the same results on Avon Drive as it is today. So applying those numbers from the original survey do not show that it runs down the center of the road anymore. The road has significantly- So why is your, why is your survey not available? Uh, those reasons are with Derek, and they are legitimate reasons, and it is standard that you do not have to file your survey. We are not the only people across the United States that have made that decision. That's true. I just had my survey, my property surveyed a week or so ago. I just got three maps from my surveyor, one mile out for the town, two paper for myself, when I bought the house, it was 0.88 acres. He surveyed it, and now I have 0.81. And one of my neighbors probably isn't real happy because one pin is down by the road on that side, but on this side, this neighbor, his pin is six feet up on his driveway because that's where the road used to go. These things are quite alarming when you get down to really looking at what's happened and we hired a surveyor a licensed surveyor and derek specifically said to him that he wanted the results to be such that we could file it at the town office and that was in january of 2016 within the first month of ownership he 
hired a surveyor with that mm -hmm. specification. And as it turned out, there is a very legitimate reason why it has now been decided that it's not filed. But it does not reflect on Mrs. Renfrew's survey. As I said, the roadbeds were surveyed. They came out the same and the line runs the same. So um, we paid that amount. That's not made up. And I'm offering you the results of what we found and you all can take it and do what you need to or... I, I'm happy to follow up with this. Yeah. I mean, it needs in Middlebury, not Montpelier. Okay. Um, all right. I'll so I, I, That's fine. We'll get a hold of him. You know, I, I appreciate that you weren't under any obligation to resurvey the roadbed. However, you know, knowing what we knew, there was a reason why it should have should have been done. And now the results, the end results of the water project have put the whole situation in jeopardy because it's it's pretty significant. It, what did you bring? You had some stuff over on the table. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'll read this and get all called in its place. And as I said, you're felt so too. But this is now under the settee on my front porch because the corner, the northwest corner of the porch. I mean, so much soil has been removed, so much heavy equipment, and now the roadbed is just a couple of feet from the pillar and we're way off. And the other end of the porch is level. The house stood there for 225 years. Because if I'm if I remember correctly, your pillars are on the ground and they're not on concrete footings. You got even more so that you've got to be especially thoughtful of what you're going to do in a snow traffic. The pillars are attached to the porch. This is part of what came up in the excavation in front of the stone wall, the one I indicated that's on the lawn. And this is the stone wall could be 150 years old or it could be 200 years old. And it just stood and since the water project, I mean, I know that location pretty acutely because I've done a lot of uh, and you saw the gardening that, that I included to make so you have the copies of the photos that Tim took. So those were in the packet I gave you. Indicate in those pictures previous things that have been done to sort of prep for two or three years prior to the start of the voting project. Like grading off in front of the stone wall. That wasn't the first time that that was done. And by the roadbed being moved over and talk of a right of way, I now have people thinking they can go on my lawn. And the snowplow went on my lawn and dragged two logs that were about eight inches inside the edge of the road. And this got smushed because it was sitting on the logs. So these things develop into this map. I'm not enjoying this trees because you know I wouldn't choose to. Friends. Okay. So this was read maybe a year ago. Was, has it been that long? I would like to express my gratitude at the opportunity to speak to the to you concerning our issues. I will speak my truth. There have been a number of significant changes to the area and the roadbed in and around 32 Avon Drive. We, the present owners of this property, Derek Underwood, principal owner, and me, his domestic partner, Sally Wernus, are keenly aware of these changes through what we've heard over the course of 18 years living at this location, through documentation, and most especially, old pictures are 250 plus or minus feet that abuts the roadbed has been altered significantly over the years, not just in the recent. The stone wall at the foot of Avon Drive 
and on our property, not only the lowering of Main Street in the past, and hence over the course of years, also lowering of Avon Drive, and a consistent encroachment onto our property and grading off in front of and at both ends of the old stone wall, it is precariously about to reach its demise, leaning forward and drooping at both ends due to all the soil removed by the town road projects. Under these circumstances, no property owner could have stopped the deterioration. And there were three things I was asked to submit what we wanted out of this. Number one, we would like to have it repaired so it can continue to stand into the future. The waterworks projects of two plus years ago, and I guess it's a little more now, should not have included widening the roadbed by taking another foot and a half off our side of the road. Widening the roadbed was no longer a possibility after lowering Main Street in the past. All available land on the street side being consumed by doing this major engineering to the streetscape. The quote, underhanded taking of land on the side abutting our property not being theoretically possible either by encroaching another foot and a half onto our land has put the town in jeopardy, removing another foot and a half of soil in front of our stone wall was too much. The embankment coming up Avon Drive. Is that the letter that you already submitted? It's like the letter that they're back. Yeah. You don't have to read the whole thing, Sally. They Moving on, I, I feel that I want to. I'm almost done. Page three. Had been greatly re let's see what was it that I was referring to. The embankment coming up Avon Drive had been greatly reduced as well, allowing for two more white lines, and Derek said those are pedestrian lines, to be painted in at the bottom of Avon Drive. So let me just there were four painted lines when we moved here, then there were five, and now there are six. So that's a lot of soil removed. And even after it was removed, tons and tons and tons of soil washed down onto Main Street. Mm. And not just soil, but digging up and removal of foundation stones was too much for the integrity of the ancient stone wall after all these alterations. So that is something that was laid to give a firm foundation, I mean, right at street level, I believe. And I think some more of that has been exposed. When I say foundation stones, a stone wall, what you see above ground, there's two to three times that much stone built underground to give it a good foundation. As I said, the wall has stood for 150 years if it goes back to Gardner Wheeler and maybe 200 years if it goes back to the original. Um, so there are stones that were dug up by coming that close to the wall itself. Uh, these stones that are underground were exposed and some were hauled off with the excavating and some, there's still some showing. So in my looking at it now, and I believe I'm, accurate to say the wall seems to have sunk. And that is based on what I'm looking at as far as the dirt and where they, oh, it is definitely sunk. The foot and a half encroachment onto our land was along the entire 250 plus or minus feet of our property line, as was requested by us when the waterworks project was getting underway that a resurveying of Avon Drive be done. Old photos show a greatly altered roadbed and we would have liked to gain back some footage lost to us on the Northwest corner and North side of our property. This was not done as we were told the state grant did not allow for changes in the roadbed. And yet without regard to potential issues developing to our property, Stonewall and house Northwest corner, 
the heavy equipment came in and removed a foot and a half of our lawn and laid asphalt. Now that was written before I saw the pictures that Tim Mills took of the actual project. We feel confident from old photos that the 20 foot town high highway called for in the 1876 survey never happened. Avon Drive remained as it was, Gardner Wheeler's driveway. Nonetheless, basically, center of the road as laid out in the 1876 road survey has continued to be ignored, encroaching ever closer to our National Historic Registered Home. The roadbed now so close to the northwest corner of the house, it feels like traffic is passing under our porch, not even in our view. It has happened several times in the last year that exceptionally large vehicles leaving the roadbed at that corner and leaving frightening ruts 12 feet long and six inches deep, and I measured, and ever closer to the bricked corner of the house. This kind of heavy vibration, and I felt it inside my house when they were doing the work for the roadbed. Including the road equipment, removing our lawn, causes damage to the foundation and the sinking of the porch pillar. We are asked number two, we are asking that the road give us back the most recent taking of a foot and a half of our property line. But again, these issues are not just of a recent concern. Our request to have the road resurveyed was because we could clearly see from old photos that this was not the first time the property line had been encroached on. An old roadbed line is clearly visible about four feet, and I've since measured it, it's actually six feet, over on the opposite side from the northwest corner of our house, is even in the present roadside running from there all the way in front of 29 and 49 Avon Drive, giving each of these properties several to many extra feet of property. Number three, we would like to have our past property taken, given back. Doing so would require the roadbed to be moved back toward 29 and 49 Avon Drive properties. Without exaggeration, I have spoken my truth. I extend an open invitation to any and all to a walking tour and I will speak to and point out all these issues. So yes, that was, I, I lost track of time. It could have been a year, it could have been six months, but that is when that was written. And since then, um, there have been a few things that have been uncovered okay. historically. The, uh, Chris and I, we came out and had an appointment with you and Matt and you showed us the rods and stuff where basically your neighbors were taking too wide of a turn and going on your property. Um, and to and to find us, I'm not sure. certainly. Anyway, so this hotel stood. Sorry, no. This hotel stood where O'Reilly's Auto Parts is. Um, at the time the survey was written, it's referred to as the Depot House. And on this photo, which I think is closer to 1895, when that historic book was written, Citizens of Bethel, where it was called the Bascom. Baskin House. So this is directly, not directly, but where the O'Reilly stands. And I believe I got this from Nick when he was closing his business. But this gentleman here, I said, oh my God. And I took the magnifier and I said, that is W.R. Adams right there. And it is, because if you read his bio, which I've included here, he ran a printing Right here's the printing office. He had 13 children, and I think these two boys are probably his sons. Okay. okay. So okay. anyway, that is there because it okay. is mentioned in the survey, and because this is the actual man that did the survey work, and it is signed on here. His name is there, and uh, he was part of the group that decided to um, came up with this idea to. survey Gardner Wheeler's driveway 
as a 20 foot highway. I think Dave has yep. a question. Okay. Yep. Uh, it is Avon good. Drive surveyor, 1876 roadbed. Yep. William Adams. Uh, his name is right here. I, I understand that, but down about six lines, it says he died in 1852. No, no, no. I'm going to get to it. Yeah. He oh, died. Oh, in, okay. He but died I, in 1892. Yes, because it was 1852. He died. He died 14 he years before this survey was done. Okay. Show me. Is it on here? Yeah, it's about six lines on the very part, first part of the, it says page 66. It's down one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eighth line. He, his death occurred on September 17, 1852. They have to come over and look at it. Here's my you looking up. Oh, that's his father. Oh. Okay. Well that I was confused. Mary. They showed you got a picture of the William R. Yeah. So and it was William R. Okay. Okay. So that's everything that you had in the pack. This was supposed to have been there. I called Kelly. I guess she might have gotten busy before she made copies. But I'm referring to the original survey. So they went to the town. Well, it actually, it's addressed to the selectmen of Bethel. We, the undersigned and voters, legal voters in the town of Bethel, request you to lay out a highway from the highway running through Bethel Village near the depot house, running thence past the house of Gardner Wheeler, that's 32 Avon Drive, to land recently purchased by M.C. Spaulding, and which he is to build a house. So I forget where, well, okay, it just follows all this writing, that the house that he wished to build and the land that he owned is where the beige house is now, where Alan Luna lives. So the survey was laid out to go from the bottom of Avon Drive to that stone marker up there. And Mr. Dr. Spaulding wanted that to become a 20-foot highway. So he found legal voters, and they signed to have the select board look at it. And it says, we the selectmen met and examined the premises as set forth in the above petition and laid a road from the highway running through the village past the depot house by the house of Gardner Wheeler to land owned by M.C. Spaulding and to be 20 feet wide, measured from the center of the road, 10 feet each side. Now, 17 or 1876, I believe is something like 220, 250 years or 150 years ago. As long as I've lived there since 2005, the roadbed has been 12 feet wide. So I think it's logical to say a 20 foot road never existed. Well, just because and, the road and the build is only yeah. 12 foot wide okay. does not mean that our right of way does not exist. Okay, go do you, 20 do you, feet. Yeah, but do you suppose they? The right of way was an idea in 1876. It sounds like it was an official survey that they laid out. They adopted it. And if you look at other road surveys, they're similarly worded. Right. But a 20 foot roadbed really was not possible because of the buildings are still standing there. Well, if you look at the um, easement deed that your that uh, your domestic partner signed, you can see that our right of way extends under your porch. Um, so he signed that legal document that you have a copy of outlining where our right of way is. So there's a lot of roads that may be a 30 or a three rod road um, throughout the town of Bethel. It doesn't mean that we're paving all that or dirting or that, you know, it's just, it means here's the road, which could be 18 feet, but we still have a right of way that's, that's there. That's okay. my explanation. Now, this, I don't know how this was unearthed from the, town books oh it's yeah it's, all the a lot of the roads have a road survey so that like committees can look continuing on um mc spalding it was high interest for him to have a roadbed because he wanted to build a house sure. 
Absolutely. Now, as it turned out, uh, his is a short bio out of the same book. Dr. M. C. Spalding, a graduate of medical department of University of Vermont in the class of 1873, located to Bethel during the latter part of that year, 1873. He succeeded in gaining a lucrative business and remained until 1877 when he sold to L. M. Green, and that's the next one, but that's neither here nor there, and moved to, okay, so from what I've heard, living in Bethel, those two houses above ours weren't to have been built. I've heard that more than once, okay? So reading these documents, it's the possibility is there that M.C. Spaulding had a dream for a house up there but perhaps was told that he couldn't have a house up there and the road never got built because there wasn't going to be a house. Built. It doesn't negate the layout of the road. I mean, the select board laid it out. So it's hard to know. There's a lot of speculation. Obviously, we don't know what happened in 1876, except that the road original road survey was recorded and, and laid out by the select board. Whether or okay. not something was built okay. is so that invalidate the survey. We've been through all of this in my house, too. Yeah. I'm just saying. Yep. And again, this is a very telling picture. We don't want to forget historically what the roadbed may have looked like. Okay. Now, where was I? So... Yeah. Paul, did you have any more questions? I didn't know if you raised your hand and I missed it. I apologize if you did. I had more to say. Uh, no, I'm just uh, saying if we can get to a point where we can make a decision uh, concerning her request. Okay. And so as I opened up by saying Derek is not here and he's probably not going to be back in Bethel for a couple of weeks, but he did want to have the opportunity to put something into the mix. Okay. Um, something else I was going um, to into the modern day here. This is okay. just, yeah. Should we post a comment until we get Oh, back? yes. Okay. So Dr. Spaulding left Bethel in 1877. This fire, the Bethel fire happened in December of 1877. And those two houses weren't supposed to be built. So I think it just laid to rest. The town was built, it was... Um, facing a major cleanup after a fire. And the road in 2005, and as long as I've known it, was a 12 foot wide road. And the waterworks project, yes, I wasn't there during the meeting. Uh, Derek came home and I, you must have sent an unsigned copies because I have those. Um, but I just remember he was quite happy and proud that he was a property owner and was willing to put his trust and confidence in this project. And uh, he was working when the project was taking place. I'm home almost all the time. And... I watched the project. I came out a few times, but now that I've seen the photos, it is frightening that that kind of digging was done that close to an historic home. It is frightening that deep and that much dirt. And we are in the process of looking into having some basement work done. That house has stood there since 1800 and this book was given to us by northern basement systems and i've read it cover to cover because we do have some foundation issues but what you don't want to do is exactly what was done that close to our house those soils 
probably had never been disturbed in the last 200 years, especially the Northwest corner. That is major, that is major. And have you had any, have you had an expert that look at that? Actually, Northern Basement sister Systems requires, in our case, I don't know if everybody, that we have a structural engineer and I am on the scheduling list to have a professional come in and do that, yes. But I mean, the Northwest corner is ridiculous. It's, I've had people who know say to me, it's just too close. And I even had my Oregon pest control man look at it as he comes and has to walk around the house. He said the asphalt alone, the weight of the asphalt is too much. So I think that the challenge that we have yeah. at the board, and we've had this before, is the that we to make a a decision like this. We, we and correct me if I'm wrong, <laughs> board, but we don't have any significant factual evidence to support what you're saying, and and when I say that is because we don't have we don't have a certified survey other than the one that is on file um you know we don't have based upon the three things that you're looking for we don't have any factual evidence from from a, a licensed individual in regards to potential damages that have happened or will happen to the home um so it, it makes it difficult for us to to move forward and change something or, or say that you know that there has been damages, we don't have that. What we do have a lot, which you do a really good job of, is there's a lot of historical images and, and things like that, but it doesn't necessarily give us the information that we need to make a decision on, on is the home being being uh, uh, damaged by traffic or, or, or things close to that, or, you know, has the road moved or not, because we don't have another serve. We don't have another survey on file other than the one that is on file, which currently doesn't show that. So, so Does if you're like show what the, the so line we we have Brenda's survey that's right. on file and the original survey when the select board and the original the survey, but, but I, you also got to have to understand that over a period of 148 years, yeah. that all roads move slightly a little bit. They all do that just through normal maintenance, and that's why there are right-of-ways that are put into place for grading, snow plowing, um, utility under structure or utility overhead structure. That's why the right-of-ways are put into place because sometimes um, things change in the, in, in the right-of-way. Um, so I, I think, you know, unless at this point, unless- yeah, the, the survey, and yes, we Derek and I talked about these things and he's not here tonight and he probably will be working for two weeks. So that puts us up to the next meeting. Um, but we're talking more than the right of way, the number of feet that the roadbed has been moved toward our. And then, like I say, uh, the hard pack that they put down and I was told they would be back in the uh, spring to, that it was our land, they'd be back in the spring to plant grass seed. And instead of that, they black topped over it. So we lost another, I'm saying two feet, but because there was no hard pack to hold that asphalt, uh, the drain in front of my porch, the asphalt has mitigated. So it's basically two feet. But um, at the end of the last date that I presented the talk that I read again tonight, I thought that I understood that the select board would meet and discuss beyond tonight or maybe after the meeting, but then that we would be called, we meaning Derek and I would be called and it would be talked about. And that sort of didn't didn't happen, but um, amongst all the other issues that we have going on on Avon Drive, um, it just keeps um, coming to my attention and it's too much. And yes, um, yeah. I do understand what you were describing about over years, but when you have a roadbed approaching that close, and I tell you, I came out 
the day they were, you know, using the excavator on my lawn because the house was vibrating. And I went down into the basement apartment bathroom and there were tiles on the floor that hadn't been on the floor. So, I mean. But that's where that, re and again, I, I don't want to put my professional opinion in this because I do this all day, every day. Uh, when it comes to road work next to homes, and I deal with this yeah. all the time with vibration monitoring and other pieces like that. I, so yeah. I, I'm not even going to give you my opinion on it, but what I'm going to tell you is you need a professional licensed opinion that needs to go in and do that. And you will be surprised at what they're yeah. going to tell you. I was very so. conscientious the first time I came to the meeting that you work for Pike, and I thought, this is great. Hmm. Um. But well, it's not we didn't have great. a follow up meeting. The, the data you're going to get is not going to follow what you think. Since is I've happening. been putting tonight's talk together, I said, wow, he signed for the water project. And then I said, you know, GW Tatro might have some responsibility here. They are engineers that. No, laid out a. They did. Their, G. W. Tatro did not. Okay, lay out. Whoever laid that out, I mean, common sense would tell you that close to that. And actually, you know, when we bought in 2015, yep. you know, the looking at it now as homeowners, I kept going back to that corner. This road bit is just too close. That was before any of this. Okay. And at I this had point, a what's lady, our, What is our next? I can call Tim Short Steps to here. help you. And if you want to wait for two weeks for Derek, I don't know what you want. I mean, it may, I mean I'm happy to call Tim Short and, and figure out the whole survey thing and what he wrote and how he came up with that information. I mean, that is a missing piece if you want to hear it. You call Tim and then we have Derek come to the next meeting that he's available at. And that was the there. plan. He, okay. he said he wanted to. Sounds good. Yeah. So we'll call Tim and we'll wait for Derek. Yeah. It's tough. Yeah. It's very tough. My God. It seems like a subject we've approached and we don't have the documentation. And I'm glad that you're willing to call, but I think that the, what do you call it, the appellate should provide the information with him. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Thanks. Yeah, I think we'll table this until we have all the information that we need. And unless we have all the information we need, there's nothing we can do at this point. We'll table it until we get the proper information. Okay. Paul? Sorry, I didn't hear what Dave was saying. He was saying that basically that, yes, he was happy. I'm willing to call Tim Shore, but he feels that, you know, it's that they're they should have to provide the information that the select board needs before they make a decision. And then I think table, and I think Denise said to table it for two weeks. Uh -huh. or okay, we get, I agree with that. Information. Yeah. Until we get the information we need, whether it's two weeks or two months, until we get that information all in full. Okay. All right, so, well, thank you for coming this evening. Yeah. Yes, I do. But we don't need not to table it. We don't need a motion to table it. Um, yeah, if you're going to table it, you'll need a motion to table it. Well, it's never an item. It's just an appointment. Oh, it was just an appointment. He's right. We're not yeah, taking action. Any, I'm sorry. There's no action to be taken. Okay. okay. So, but, but I will make a note that you're right. We should we, postpone it until we have all the documentation we, we need. Okay. I got, yeah, I'm sorry, Denise. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yep. All right. So you got both your maps. So I gave you back everything you needed. Okay. All right. Excellent. Yeah. Thank have you. a good night. Good evening. Oh, and I cut everything back from in front of the stone wall. So do take a look because it's. I think. Good night. Good night. Good night. Sally, do you want me to drop that off at your house? Okay. All right. I just wanted to make sure. All right. All right, Kurt, you're up. Uh, 
you want me to stand for this or can you hear from here? Yeah. Hey, Paul, can you hear Kurt? Can you hear me, Paul? Say something, Kurt. I just did. You can turn it towards me. Thank you. You're all, you're all set. Thank you. That a little better? Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. Brought it down to. <laughs> Don't want to break it. Perfect. All right. Now, now we'll probably blow Paul right away. Uh, uh, you okay? All right. Um, so I'm here for my to to check in. Uh, my my report will probably be a lot shorter than our previous one. Um, the uh, uh, as you know, the legislature uh, adjourned in the second week of May, and with with a uh, veto override session on the third Monday in June. And uh, and after that, we we cannot go back into session even if we want to at this point. Uh, we adjourned in, in a manner that that says we can't, we can't come back. Uh, um, I think the governor has a provision in certain emergencies, he could call us back, but otherwise, but otherwise we're done. Um, so, uh, for the most part, the legislative session, most of us are, are, I mean, it's campaign season. And so a lot of people are campaigning. And, uh, um, and otherwise there are, uh, are a few committees that there are some study committees that are working. I'm not on any of them. Um, but uh, th then there's always the joint fiscal committee that just meets I think once a month during the ses off session to keep an eye on the books. Uh, there's the legislative, it's LCAR, legislative council, administrative reg regulations committee or something like that. And uh, uh, what that is, is, um, you know, you write a bill and your bill lays out policies but then there's all the rules and regulations that the state has come up with. And so, so that's the committee that works with the state to, to get the rules and regulations and processes in place. Uh, and so they work over the summers and, and do that stuff. Now I'm not on that one either. Um, the, uh, uh, so, uh, so there has not been a lot of specific legislating. Uh, I've certainly uh, tried to respond to uh constituents who have reached out and Therese was one and 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 got you uh through to Allison Clarkson who got yeah. you the answer. Uh and uh and that's uh but that's I yeah. don't have a lot else to report. So what Kurt was saying was uh was alluding to was my um my uh attempts to figure out what's the state feeling is about the OSHA that talked about the firefighter uh, that they're changing that fire brigade statue and that it it, it will cripple us and uh, that they're pairing them with NEPA you know, NFPA standards and so you know I called the Vermont League of Cities and Towns I wrote to Kirk I you know I, I talked to the Vermont firefighter so basically I ended up submitting a comment letter which is in our packet um, outlining what it could do what it will do to us um and so i had written to kurt and then he put me in touch with someone at the state who basically said the state is going to has always adopted the same rules as osha so they've never in their history made like a different change so <clears throat> doesn't bode well for us but we'll see what osha does we're not the only ones you know crying out about this it's it's you know nationwide so that's what i had reached out to kurt about this time and I did email Kurt and let him know that I had provided you with the new open meeting law statute, the tax, uh, the delinquent tax thing, the fact that um, about the municipality ethics. And so I had told him the ones that we had outlined a little bit of. And, um, you know, just for the record, I do want to say that I thought that, that the legislator spent legislation spending time on municipal ethics was insulting. I mean... We are a division of the state. We are a Dillon's rural state. We can only do what you allow us to do. So the fact that you spent that, not you personally, but people spent time on that was like, seriously, like, you know, housing crisis, taxes, you know, like I felt like there was bigger fish to fry, but that's just my own personal opinion because I've been yeah. in it a long time. So, but uh, I did see that they addressed something about, um, 
you know, humane officer, you know, if you notice that that was another statute that got affected was about the dogs. You know, if you have an issue with the, the they're taking, so the Windsor County Sheriff's office, because we contract with them can no longer investigate animal cruelty because of some legislative change. And so I just gave a note to Ryan or to uh, Jordan asking him to figure out that with Ryan. So I just, I just, sometimes I'm just frustrated, Kirk. I feel like you and I know that there's big issues out there, but yet they don't get solved. And then people are calling the town saying, my taxes are going to go up. I saw this blurb on TV and we spent a lot of time explaining that that was school tax and that it's going to bode okay for Bethel, et cetera, et cetera. So that's my complaint. <laughs> <clears throat> just want to get it out there. Yep. Yeah, and I, I had written down a few things. I mean, I think one thing that, is still impacting us. It doesn't get a lot of um, eyes, but you know we're we, we're still owed money from the July flooding. Um, the FEMA process, as we all know, is is very slow. Um, and but I will say that you know, having been through the process several times now, <laughs> that you know it's not because we don't have our ducks in a row. You know, like I know often there's a lot of communities that maybe haven't done the paperwork correctly or haven't done the proper pictures or whatever, but we have everything in line and especially right now with you know how expensive short-term borrowing and things like that is with percentage rates i mean it's a big deal to get your money and it, and it still seems like maybe i'm wrong but it still seems like maybe washington doesn't have all the money to give the states from last year still um mm -hmm. and now we have some new flooding so i mean i think on our end of things is you know we had a million and a half dollars that affected our bottom line we've been paid approximately you know uh more than half you know i mean we, we still have a significant amount of money that's left that we're paying interest on um which isn't cheap mm -hmm. now we you know we luckily we did have you know a large portion of that that we we did have some cash available to to do that but um you know, now with the recent flooding, I'm just wondering, like, you know, how, is this, no. when is this going to get paid out? And I know it's not a state thing, but, you know, it's just. Although it is a state thing because the state. Nice to put, put a little pressure on them. States, no dummies. What they do is they, the state will not pay you your portion, which in our case is 12 and a half percent, as Kurt's well aware. They won't give us a dime until FEMA has paid us, paid us out completely. Right. So while we're waiting for FEMA to get their ducks in a row, the state's sitting on our 12 and percent for projects that are obligated that we've been paid for, but I can't request the money because FEMA hasn't paid me entirely for the disaster. So, you know, it's a thing. But funny story is, riddle me this, Camp Brook Road is a federal highway. I got my money like that. And it was dealt with via the bike ped grant people they gave me a grant agreement right out of the gate so they were allowing me to get reimbursement so we had a million dollars or so worth of damage on camp brook road that i got paid for aren't they isn't the money coming from the feds both ways just two two different programs so that's confusing yeah. Yeah. not that you run the feds but run for president kirk yeah. <laughs> fix it all yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know, the the Fed the Fed pieces are 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 you know always frustrating for for everyone involved. And um, you know, at, in my committee, Commerce and Economic Development, you know, we're always dealing with regulations around Department of Labor and and the state's Department of Labor basically just has to follow what the Feds tell them you know, mm -hmm. there's very little room for them to even maneuver uh or else uh federal department of labor just says well you're out of compliance and we're not going to not going to give you department of labor funds we're not going to do these things so yeah it's it's a challenge i, I think statewide statewide it's a big challenge because you have you know it's getting where every year another set of towns in many cases are getting hit hard, except for a few like Barry that gets hit every year now, seems like. Um, and, you know, and all those towns are are saying both at the federal level, but also the state level, they're saying, well, bail us out, help us out. And, 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 you know, and I think people want to, but on the other hand, 
right? Yeah, I mean, so I give you money this year for your flooded town, then next year you have to give money to that for their flooded town, and the next year they have to give it to me because my town flooded. And, and, and you know, it's just... I did think that the idea of um, the state paying the local match for federal mitigation was a fair way, was a fair thing to do. And, and obviously we already had a, a mitigation project underway with federal money on Gilead. And so we are applying for that. So I do think that that was a fair way for the state to say they were kind of bailing you out, giving you the match money for your mitigation grant if you get chosen. So I do think that, Kurt, that was a good, that was a good fit. That's a it's ongoing challenge, and I think it's it's a major one that both at the federal level and the state level we're going to have to try and figure out, you know, what's the response. It's uh, hard to make an unequitable situation equitable because this yeah. guy might flood all the time, and this guy may never flood, and so. And and you know and yeah, you certainly have a lot of compassion for those communities, for like Barry. Absolutely. Twice. Now. Uh, yeah, was one year apart, and uh, uh, and but what? And and I guess that you know you have the, you know you have the decision. You know, do you help people or not? Right. But I think once the government has decided to help people, then they need to move quickly. You know, yeah. like yeah. it's it's not the point where we're waiting. Like, are you going to help us? They've already said they're going to help us. Yeah. We've done everything. It's sitting in front of them. All they have to do is in some cases, just review it, they'll call us with questions like, um, so, you know, the coordinates you're giving us are, is in the woods. Well, yeah, that's where the roads are. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like yeah. these are the questions that we're getting that's holding it up from getting money from us. And it's like, it'd be different if they're saying, we don't know if we're going to pay for it or not, yeah. but they've already said, we're going to pay for it. We've done every, all our due diligence. And so now we're like, like, show us the money. Like, you know, where is it? And, or, or don't tell us it's coming. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I mean, because, yeah. you know, now you're just like sitting on it. You're and right. it's hard too, because you have someone out of state, the CRC for FEMA yeah. is not in Vermont. Yeah. So you're dealing with people who've never seen the project and you're just like, right. you know, uh, and, and I'm on my third PDMG for the July disaster. So, you know, it's, it was rough. And uh, I, I do still think there's some software issues to the state that I'd like to, that I think that, Bethel or that the state should help municipalities get. And I'm going to push that rock uphill as soon as I get through my December disaster. Um, so you can but, more streamline it. Easy. Yeah. To, to try. I feel like that they, I know that the state has software and, you know, we're out there with a slide rule and abacus, you know, on a piece of paper. And this guy from the state shows up with a tablet dick, 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 and has these, I'm like, where well, we could do that and, hurt you, you know. with the tablet, you know, I'm just like, yeah. and we're out here with a piece of paper writing in all the coordinates. And so I do feel there's room there, but you know, like I said, I just need to get this second disaster under my belt and then I can fight with the state about that. And, uh, but I do think there's room for, you know, yeah. coverage and, and improvement, you know, coordination, but it's a lot. And I felt bad, you know, Chris and I were talking, we felt horrible for Barry but at the same time, we were thanking God, it wasn't us. Yeah. Again, you know, I was just, I thought my my head might have imploded. I was, you know, so I do, we feel for people. And, um, you know, it's. Does FEMA have a name at the moment? Do they just keep printing No. I think they keep printing. Well, the feds have to pass their, they put money in their federal budget about disaster declarations but there i was met with fema last week and she showed me that our pdmg showed me the map of all the declarations for fema that have been declared i don't know where the money's coming from brian social security social yeah. security where it's been coming. But. i mean because obviously fema needs to say you can't build back you know at first it's always building back to pre-disaster conditions well you know dang well that's not what happens if your house has been torn out three times by a tornado, there are technologies that would allow you to build a home that would sustain that. But instead we keep putting the same things back. So I think that FEMA itself needs to be, you know, enforcing they, we do like, if we have a 15 inch culvert, we can go to 18, but we're very limited on what we can do as mitigation. You have to request it. It extends your project and there is more money there, but um, <clears throat> you know, July, we just came in and got it done and, and do some things, but we could 
FEMA should allow us to build back better. And and it and it becomes a process. And, and the other question that, well, I mean, there's a lot of discussions that continue to go on. I mean, about, you know, basically the, you know, the way the education spending went this year and and the way that was settled or not, right? So, you know, we I think a majority of Vermonters just believe that a Band-Aid was thrown on it and next year is going to come and it's going to be an even bigger uh-oh, you know? Right. And and I think talking to a lot of people, there was a lot of miscon misconceptions out there of, you know, because the governor was fighting for, the governor was trying to open people's eyes, right? That something big was coming. But even today, like there are people that that, you know, maybe people in Royalton that didn't have a significant change, but still believe that they're getting taxed at a higher rate. You know what I mean? Because it yeah. was out there. Now, not saying like that's good, but I think we all can see that long term we're in trouble here. And it doesn't seem like we've done enough. We've done enough in, you know, to to cure that going forward. You know, like I, I, with the CLA is continuing to diminish. You know, it's going to be several years before towns are able to get through that process. I mean, we're in the process. It's, the process. it's a long process. And, and you know, I, I just, you know, I think we're all going to see the yield bouncing again. And and no. so, I, I mean, is there more behind the scenes of what's going to go on there, you think, in the next I mean, session? Or? First of all, everyone knew this was coming, right, uh, years, a couple of years ago. Uh, and, and people were, uh, there were people that were trying to work on it. Um, uh, even the start of this year, the legislature said to the governor, "We need to work on this." And 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 what what you know, regardless of your of your opinion about Phil Scott, he's a politician, and uh, and and he's and and he's a smart politician. So his answer was, "No, you come up with a solution." And and so he refused to work with the legislature, um, and so legislature put together. What they could, um, and and then and then and then he at once they gave him what they had proposed, uh, which was which you know we had that twenty percent projected increase, and that was due to a whole bunch of things, uh, you know, inflation, school, uh, crumbling schools, all the all the school budgets that were going to be up because they're crumbling schools, um, you know, all that stuff. The legislature worked really hard to bring it down. Uh, to 14. Uh, you know, and, and the governor's proposal, uh, I actually brought that with me because the cases came up. Um, the governor's proposal uh, would have, in fact, this year, it, your taxes would have gone down a little bit uh, under the uh, governor's proposal. Uh, but all it was doing is putting it on a credit card. It's not it's, it's so that next year, you're, you're instead of going up 20 percent it'd go up 30 or 40 percent um because all he was doing was he was def defraying the pain of it um and uh which which you talked about uh, the town's borrowing capabilities and borrowing money for for these projects um all of the the nonpartisan uh economic advisors uh in in the state said oh my god if you do the governor's plan uh, it will ruin our bond rating and all of you know, those borrowings you all these towns and all the state do. It's going to be more expensive, and and so this is this is going to put uh, a lot of pressure. But you know, but it sounds good in a in a uh, in a political ad, uh, and so uh, and so the legislature did what you know. I mean. It, they wanted to work with him. He didn't want to work with them because because uh, he wanted to make it look like this was something for an election year. I get it. He doesn't like the supermajority, and he's willing to 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 create a to allow a um, he was allow he, allow a crisis to arise and not participate in it so that he could then use that in campaigns later. And that's really what that's really from the inside. That's what you see. And so, um, so no, it's it's not a good situation. Um, you know, I mean, Bethel came out well. I mean, you know, our rate basically for the, our homestead was was zero uh, increase. I mean, it went, actually, it went down by it did. what a something tiny, tiny amount, like 
I had those numbers. Yeah, it did go down and, and the non-resident went up, which makes sense. But so wasn't part of it the issue, Kirk, the fact that the Bethel School and Royalton School combined did a good job with the COVID oh, money? So that, I mean, if towns had gone crazy with COVID money, created programmings that they couldn't sustain on their regular tax dollars, everybody knew the money was going to dry up. So did that contribute to the escalation of the budgets? I mean, budgets? certainly, yes. Mm -hmm. I mean- yeah. Uh, again, remember. How, yeah. Well, remember how our remember how our system set up, right? The whole notion of of it's you know it's all pooled. So all of the school budgets are you know they they calculate what all the schools say they need for money, and then and then they break that back out, and all the towns are supposed to based on pupil weightings and and those kind of calculations, so that every town is paying their fair share. The the and part of the problem was was that a lot of these schools um, initially the first problem was was they had a cap on on that how much they could you know, where they would be penalized and since there was a cap everybody was like oh well, we'll just go right over that so they took that off and that brought some of it down but uh, but it's still I mean it, it's not entirely just because they're being bad um, you know it, we haven't had a uh, infrastructure there used to be money that the state would collect infrastructure to help repair, you know, upgrade schools. And they stopped that about 10 years ago, putting any money into it. There's no program to do that. So if if you're the Bethel Royalton, and I know Bethel Royalton has like said, and, and for a while, it's painful, right? You were like, well, we got to fix this stuff. And 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 Bethel addressed it. You know, kind of like Woodstock, their school is the same age as the Bethel school. They they basically have done nothing uh, to upgrade it, and it's it's. Uh, I've seen the pictures of the lolly columns in the in the school and stuff that are basically rusted through, um, and so that's why they they're like, they have you know. So they basically tried to put that money into their budget, which everybody who does that raises that entire pool that has to be raised from everyone in the state, and that's so yeah, it's it's a problem, and that and. And part of that problem is, is again, right? I mean, very fact that it's tied to our uh, uh, to our property tax. Um, you know, that in itself is problematic. And uh, I think I mentioned this before, uh, uh, not this summer, previous summer, uh, there was a study group that did a lot of work with the Joint Fiscal Office, who was the nonpartisan uh, money people who calculate budgets and, and go through all this stuff there. And they tried, they looked at four different models of, of what if it was all all on income tax and what if a certain percentage was income tax and some was property and some was, you know, and they tried to do different models. Problem is, is people's income goes like this every few years. And so it's all on income tax. And then then uh, one year you'd have way too much money for your, for your schools. And the next year you would have too little for your schools. And that's, and so it's not a stable. So what do you use? It's stable. And, you know, uh, people's property values are the most stable. So do you do you do you do some combination? Do you throw that all out and come some other thing that you are, you know, seeking the money through? And hmm. and you know, they they basically generate a whole bunch of things and said, well, now we have to we have to figure out that not, none of those were good answers. So now what? Questions we have not heard anything from any of them saying, let's see if we can cut costs. Let's see if we can have now we have a statewide uh, health care contract. Well, how come it just went ballooning when it was supposed to stabilize and get that contract under control? Now, in the seven years since I've been gone, the health care for a family has more than doubled. Yeah. More than doubled. Now, I worked at I worked at the contracts when we, when I was in the school board and it doesn't sound to me like the people in the contract. Is it, what do you want? Okay, that's great. That's what I that's what I'm seeing. We why? I gotta be careful. <laughs> Breathe. <laughs> Deep breath. And I'm not there, but I don't see anyone working too damn hard. Maybe we need to, maybe it has to go to the feds. Maybe maybe our healthcare is off the rails. Maybe everybody's got to go up and say, 
okay, Mr. Dr. Gifford, you don't need $585,000 salary. Because we can't, we don't have control. I understand buying from something from GW or from a Valley Motors. I can say yay or nay. But when it comes to healthcare, you don't, you can't say, well, I want to go to Burlington. Well, I might have bled to death before I got to Burlington. You don't, you don't have a choice. And when you don't have a choice, somebody's going to step in and say, no, you can't do that. And that's that's the problem. I mean, at the last few years I was on the school board, that's, you know, the schools today are much different than they were when we were in school. And there's, uh, well, it's not know, schools are now, school. they're doing more than educating. Like they're, Look they're, at our tax bill. they're temporary they're, babysitting. They're, they're doing a lot more. And I'm not saying that they should be, but they are point. doing a lot more when than they ever on, did on the board and school cost tax money. Was three times the proper, the municipal tax. They're getting done damn close to equal now. Yeah. Yeah, I saw that. I mean, it's not, it's, you yeah. know. It's hard. You would think another state had figured this out, the word Scott. You know, I'm not about reinventing the wheel. There's other states. It seems like somebody must have figured this out that could work for us, but that's just just me. I mean, there's, there's other states, different you know, variations anything. out there, and well, of course. But like Kurt nailed it on the head. I mean, the easiest one, you know, if you are the it's owner, state. right? The easiest thing is to say property tax because you know that is cons well, at least it's consistent money to collect, right? Mm -hmm. Incomes go up and down, and that's right. why Vermont went to property right. taxes years ago because of that. Was it's a stable system to but if, not for us, yeah, but for you to collect if, money. If income goes up and down, but it's difficult for us as property mine has, mine has over the years, and I know what my budget is. And if I have a good year, I put some money away. Mm. So that when I have a bad year, I can pay for it. But I don't think I don't think that our government does that. If we got a million dollars, we spend a million dollars. Well, yeah, and that, I mean, I was just going to say that. I mean, well, Vermont used while, to have rainy day fund. Well, uh, yeah, I don't think I, we we all know that in government, if if they got it, they will, they will spend it. Yeah, uh, they you know they'll find a way to out. You know, there's uh, not to say it's entirely true. I mean, so the um, what was it uh, this year? Part of how they brought down that that rate by six percent was they took. Uh, 25 million out of the general fund uh, that they basically took it out of other programs and 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 threw it into that into that pool to pay that down. Uh, they they also took a bunch of money. There is a there is a slush fund um, uh, that is not the correct name for it, but you get my drift. Uh, um, um, for uh, for education because the education budgets do tend to do this. And, and so they they have some money that is set aside. Part of the governor's uh, actual proposal was to bring that balance to zero um, in that fund. And again, uh, the idea was that that's, but but actually statutorily by law, um, it could change the law, I suppose. Um, but statutorily, uh, if if anything you take out of that that slush fund. You have to bring it back. You have to refill it the next year. Like Social Security that they never did. Yeah. Wow. I'm sorry to go there, but that's what I want to talk about. But those are definitely the big things that, you know, we're dealing with as a town is yeah. you know, obviously that the education piece of it is not fixed. Probably will never be fixed, but it's not a good position that it's going to really, at, at some point, it is going to affect us here in Bethel, right? I mean, it's mm -hmm. we we dodged the bullet right now. We did. I mean, we yeah. got and then, CLA. And then with our budgets every yeah. year that we yeah. see, I mean, the biggest mover in our budget every year is healthcare, mm -hmm. right? I mean, even if we just do nothing different, I mean, we're already a couple of pennies more every year just because of healthcare goes up to pay workers to do things. Or, yeah. or, or your, your you contract services that they pay, you know, more. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the... And then, you know, this year we had a lot of inflationary type things that, that jumped to. The other thing, Ryan, too, you got free time. Why don't you go up there and fix the education ooh, tax system? You got time. You go. <laughs> Show them how the checkbook works. <laughs> if you don't have it, you can't spend it. You... Yeah. Uh, but, you know, one thing I, I want to say is that uh, uh, 
the uh, I'm not on this committee, uh, but on the appropriations committee, I do watch their budgeting process, and and they really, you know, um, now they are, you know, almost anybody, any committee, any bill, whatever they say, I want five million. They say we'll give you two. Uh, you know, uh, you know, and that they they really do work hard to 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 get those folks down, and that's one of those interesting things. And this goes back to I think I've told this story before, um, but I saw it a lot this year in a really big way. Uh, uh, you know, governor again gave us his budget, and he said, "This is my budget. Don't go over my budget. This is the budget I want. You know, don't you dare go over my budget." And then. And within hours, people from his various administration were in our committees saying, there's this program that we're doing right now. It is helping so many people that I, I could think of three programs that in my, from my committee that helped uh, technical education for, for kids, for teens, uh, that, that cost, I don't know, Hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars. You know, there were there were you know several of these programs, and and the people in his administration came in and said, "Look, this created this many jobs. This gave this many credentials. These people were such a success. It would be a pity if this went away, and the governor isn't going to fund it, and we can't make any further commentary on that. Just be a pity for it go away." Yeah, and and so of course he knows that we're going to say, "All right, we're going to give him." The hundred and fifty thousand, uh, and and so so that's you know that's the the political game that gets played there, and uh, um, and it, it just it is what it is, and and uh, but I as a as just a Vermonter, I just wish people would yeah, say what you. I, I know I'm I'm not a good politician in that regard. I I wish people would say what they needed, say what they meant. And actually, well, that's what I was going to say. So, you know, the governor, you know, that means I'm going to give you, again, right? give you the money. So you ask for five because you only you're, know you're only going to get two. Yeah. You don't need only 1.5. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's it. Right. Well, and I said, uh, and appropriations will do that and they'll take that out. And then that, yeah. I got it's, another question, which is, yeah. Not even talking <laughs> about Paul's next. I uh, thought I was going to be quick. No, go ahead. Just after oh. Paul. Yeah. Can't. Go ahead, Paul. Oh, pick me. Pick me. Kirk, can you touch a little on bail reform and, and address some of the catch and release uh, policy that seems to be perpetrating, uh, you know, law enforcement nowadays? Is there any activity toward changing that uh, concept? There is, there is. Uh, the, the Judiciary Committee, I happen to uh, uh, have a guy who's in Bethel who was uh, on the Judiciary Committee, uh, represents for a while. Uh, and, uh, uh, and so he used to, we used to have lunch and he'd tell me what was going on in this committee. Uh, and they've been, they've been doing a lot with, with trying to, to cut back on some of that stuff. Uh, one of the bills that was passed, I, I, I'm sure I mentioned this before, um, was, um, where, uh, basically aggregating offenses, because if you have, um, uh, if you have a, uh, you know, the, I th I'm trying to remember the exact number, but I think it's approximately nine hundred dollars, and that becomes a felony. Uh, and so anything under that's a misdemeanor. And most of the misdemeanors, you get caught, right? You know, that you go, they they Don't they, that. they tell you we'll see you in court, uh, but we're we're way backed up, and so we'll see you in six months which is a problem, and the judiciary has been working on trying to get more judges. But uh, even when they do have a court date, if they don't show up to the court date, that's not a well, problem. I, well, that's, a, that's part so of the So then they too. can just keep doing so, it and keep running. So what, and, and, and so, um, and so what they've been doing is, is uh, one of the bills was to, uh, if a certain number of offenses by the same person within a certain window of time, uh, they aren't treated as separate, they're aggregated. And that that therefore put will put it up over that 900,000, that becomes a felony, and then, then they, they they have to stay in jail till till that gets put through. So they're they're trying to do those kinds of procedures. Some of it is, you know, some of it's the way the judges are. 
Some of it is uh, some of it is we have a shortage of police officers. Um, so so to send someone out to get that person who didn't show up for court, uh, they they may not even have the staff to do that. But then they bring them in to be arrested, which is again not a felony. So they're just getting released to get. So they're just bringing them to the station to bring them back home. Yeah. And a lot of times they have to give them a ride home after they bring them to the station. So, yeah. I mean, it's absolutely, which, state, which is also a waste, waste of time and money, right? As a state doing anything to assist the Vermont State Police with recruitment and retainage. I know that was an issue. I've spoken to all past three commanders of the state police uh, in bar barracks and Royalton. And, and that's a big thing. You know, people come in from out of state, they go through the training and then they get better opportunities to leave the state. So it seems like, you know, and then you get whatever's happening in Chittenden County, but you get people, you know, it seems like retention and retainage. And, and also I think you have frustrated police officers, whether they're state police or deputies who, you know, we coined at the catch and release state yeah. where if, you know, their efforts are not rewarded by doing this after the investigation and stuff. So I'm just curious, you know, to follow up on Paul's question, what's the state doing to help the Vermont State Police with retention and retainage and, and recruitment? And, <clears throat> you know, and, and I think like we just got to crack down. I mean, we had a repeat offender and I had an officer tell me we're so happy they got arrested in New Hampshire. They have real laws there. So how bad is that? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, and we, as you know, you, you have drug issues on, on your road and, and there are other places in, in Bethel and in every town. So it's like, we all know it's a problem. So I mean, not like, and, and not to get off the tracks, but I mean, it, it's really getting, we don't see it. I mean, Yes, we, we, we do see it, do see it. but <laughs> I, I'm telling you, like, uh, take a trip to Burlington. Like, it is eye-opening what is going on in the city of Burlington. Well, if anybody has, I mean, I, mean I, I wouldn't say go there for a family picnic for the day, but everybody needs to go visit and see what's going on there. It is unreal you can go to what Burlington was yeah, four or five years ago and what it is now. Like, yeah. I mean, I, I, I unfortunately had to go to a business uh, event event for somebody <laughs> that was getting their thirtieth you know anniversary, and I parked at the parking garage off of Church Street at ten o'clock in the morning, and and I'm not exaggerating when I say there was thirty to forty individuals, thirty to forty individuals that were stuffed in there, mm -hmm. and I can tell you that they they weren't sober, they were on something, uh, they were yeah. sleeping, you know, I mean it was just off, and at every corner of church, yeah. I mean, it is awful what's going on yeah. there. So, I mean, and it's safe space that they've given them to yeah. test their yeah. Oh, it's unreal. Drugs and clean needles, and it's like we have gone totally reverse. And, and do you know what you not see the whole time you're there? Law enforcement, nobody, nothing. You don't see anything. Who wants to? It's just like it's just it's it's, it's the whole thing. 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 You know, again, that we were trying to fight here in in Bethel is for a while we had good police presence. So we didn't have a lot of issues and then we didn't have good police presence. And what happens? All the issues come back. Right. Yeah. And it's it's just like that up there. It's unreal to, to watch that. And and then you just see it. I was in Montpelier today. I mean, you go to Montpelier and yeah, I mean, I was sitting at the gas station. It didn't take me more than 10 minutes to realize that this same couple. Assuming they're a couple. You know, we're up to no good. Like, you know, what I mean, it was like they cross it, they cross the highway, and then they go back over and then cross the highway that way, and then back over and they cross the highway. You know, it's like like it doesn't take rocket science to figure out what's going on there, but it just seems like in a way we are we have become a joke of a state when other states would be like, Well, I'm glad they got caught in New Hampshire because at least they can be dealt with now. And it's or like your like Massachusetts. Yeah. Like I, I understand but here. Like I feel for people, but yeah. at some point we gotta put our foot down and say enough's enough. And you know, and that's why we are losing good law enforcement officials because they're like I just catch them and they're back out. I'm, I'm yeah. gonna go somewhere else. Where yeah. I Is be. bail reform on the docket, do you think, for next year that people are something that uh are there gonna be more bills? Bail reform is bail, oh, bail reform. reform. I, I I imagine it is. Uh, I mean, but we start we start anew yeah. next year. So um, so I don't really know what any of the bills are going to be. But um, but I do know that 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 all the, those are issues that were important to the judiciary committee mm -hmm. this year. 
uh, they really they really were trying to to uh, just kind of tighten that stuff up. That's one of the priorities of the that the legislature had. You know, certainly uh, workforce housing and uh, and 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 basically public safety mm -hmm. uh, were were like three of the the big ones. Do you know the anybody on the judiciary committee that would? Huh? Do you know anybody on the committee that would come down and just sit and talk for a little while? I mean, they won't. They won't probably until until after. I mean, they're all campaigning right, right now. Mm -hmm. So, so they're 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 all not to like here, but 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 uh, but um, I mean, right. I'm trying to think, and I don't even know if the committee chair is running for re-election. I have to, I have to see who is who is still going to be trying to be there. Could you just email me and let me know who you think is on the Judiciary Committee? I can send it to Jordan, and Jordan has always emailed them and yeah. you know yeah. reach out. Just I, and I can ask. I can certainly Thank ask you. and see if, if they if they have a sense of the, those kind of things being on the, Be great. On the docket. Because I mean, of course, they they can't say that they have anything officially on the docket for next year. Right. But um, but but you know, just like my committee knows it, that uh, data privacy got killed this year and so we know it's going to be back next year yeah uh, and uh yeah. And, say, and you can sponsor a bill you could work I with Jordan yeah. or somebody to sponsor a bill i can and the windsor county sheriff so you could work with someone to sponsor a bill even if it's outside of your committee if, yeah right? absolutely huh if he'd want to if he wants to yeah yeah um yeah and then i mean it's like i i think dispatch is being paid very poorly so you call into dispatch i have had numerous complaints that People would rather not call 911 to be helped because of the way they're treated by dispatch. Really? I okay. umpteenth people have reported this and I'm like, and it, myself too. I mean, it's like all of a sudden you're being interrogated and you're like calling for help. Hmm. And it's that's not good. Sour. Well, I think I think what happens, you know, to his point, not to drag it on too much longer, it's just, you know, is there there are a lot of issues out there. And when and when we actually have citizens that are willing to take matters in their own hands and they call, they get nothing. They call, they get nothing. They call, get nothing. Eventually they become the, uh, oh, Jarvis is online too. Let's get rid of him. You know, and that and then and then it becomes like you're the bad person for calling in. Right. So then what do you do? You stop doing it, right? Yeah, well, and, people start you know, doing it themselves. And I, exactly. Not, or or you get the vigilant. People are so yeah. done with it that they're gonna do it themselves and they're going to end up in trouble when we're not being supported by the system. And we had an issue with that on, on a road um, in town where there was drug activity at a house and the neighbors started shooting into the air to kind of like scare people off. Well, this is Hunter yeah, safety is, 101. Yeah. I, I'd assume those bullets are coming down somewhere, yeah. but, but, Jordan is right. People are so frustrated that what we don't want to see arise in is like vigilantism. People taking stuff into their own hands because they're not being treated well and they can't get help. So, you know, this was a legitimate situation, uh, you know, and we were like, wait a second. So I was calling the sheriff saying, you have to go educate the neighbors on A, stop doing that. <laughs> and and B, you know, so how are they going to get help? You know, so they don't get in trouble or accidentally kill their other neighbor because they're shooting in the air. Work with those people to shoot back. Yes, right. Exactly. I mean, that's the other. Yeah. Maybe we can pick this up someday together. Well, we did you have something? Oh, Dave, Dave has. A I have a uh, a question that I I heard from. Actually, it was on the. What was uh? It was it on. Uh, on Digger, or maybe it was a anyway, one of those programs that uh, they were quoting a percentage of the lawmakers that are really Vermonters. That are what? That are Vermonters. And it was less than 30%. 70% of people that are in the legislature came to Vermont. So they don't, so my point is they don't have the values of a Vermonter in my mind. In my in my field. So if you don't have those values, you're not going to work on the things that people like me need. Your values are, this is a drug guy. He needs a lot of help. So I'm going to give him a lot of money and a lot of help 
so that he can keep taking his drugs. Where this guy over here has got little children with druggies all around him. We're not going to do anything about that because that's that's okay. And I tell you, I actually heard heard. I'm not going to say what I heard because that I don't want to get anybody in trouble. But it, <laughs> I mean, I heard a really bad thing the other day. Yeah. And we are what is the what are we what are we for a state? What's what's it called? A Dylan's rural state. Where if if he comes, if someone comes in my house, oh, no, that's not and tries to 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 hurt me and my family. If there's a window I can jump out of the second story, I have to jump out that window. I cannot protect myself because mm. it's against the law. Mm. But I'm going to tell you that you'll come visit me in jail because if that happens, I will protect myself. I don't give a shit about law. I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't know what that law is. Not the film, but the, I, yeah, I don't know what that law is. Jordan may know. But it's but called I, something. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to acknowledge that law. But, yeah, uh, I'm not sure what it is, but I'm probably not going to think of that at the time. <laughs> well, that, but that, that's what we're all talking yeah. about. Somebody, oh yeah, somebody's going to do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, you know. and I think you know, Dave has you know, and we see that even in our town with you know, Ten State Town Meeting Day, right? I mean, you know, a lot of people have moved into the area either to Vermont or Bethel or other places over time, and you know come with their own values from where they come I mean, from. we leave the meeting want to selling drugs in the parking lot. Vermont oh, or Jesus. Bethel or... Yeah, last meeting, they were right out here selling drugs when we left. Mm. Right out here. Yeah. yeah. It's, definitely, it's definitely bad. And it, it, as we know, when, you know, economy right. is not good, then those things horse. get magnified, right? So... No, but it was good to beat the the horse. He hadn't been here in a while, so yeah, we that's, right, that's, right. that's right. Yeah, but I guess we were catching up for lost so time. I wasn't on the agenda. Yeah, I apologize. <laughs> yeah, that was my bad. Again. Next time we'll bring you a helmet. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know if you're allowed to ask a question or not. You I'm about to jump ask to the seat if I have to. And this isn't a local. It is a local issue, but it is a federal federal issue. I. Don't know what involvement the state legislature has with the federal postal, well, with our postal system. But there's rumors, I'm always hearing them, have no idea if they're true, that now that White River Junction short sorting station has been moved to Massachusetts, that Bethel Post Office and others are in jeopardy of being closed. And this all goes back to the whole issue of the head of the postal division in Washington wants to eliminate a bunch of these so that we don't have mail-in ballots. Is there any, that's my situation, that my concern obviously is our mail delivery, the employees, uh, a lot of people get their medications by mail. Is there any Anything that the legislature can say to, not Peter Welch or, you know, but the postal system or other avenues to put pressure to say this is not going to work. Or to find out if it's true. Or to find out if it's true. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's that's the first thing. Let's find out whether or not. Yeah. I mean, we do know that that there was a proposal to close the White River Junction, sort of. Well, I thought they'd already moved. Huh? I thought I think I think they I think they they didn't they postpone it. I think they did. Yeah. I thought it had already happened. I, yes. Paul I mean, said yes that they no. they didn't close it. Paul, what do you know? No, they the there was an idea to do that, but it has not gone through. At at this point. Yeah, we get, we get mail. We get and that, on our well, the problem here in Bethlehem right now is. They're very short staffed. Um, I'm not sure who's here in the morning, but I saw Stevie going up the street this morning and he says, well, the post office is closed. The The people that do the routes go in and do their stuff. There's a woman that comes in for a little bit and then she leaves, locks the post office, puts a sign on the door that says short of staff. And then when the postal person comes in at 11, she used to come in at 12, she comes in at 11, she has a workers comp thing. And so there's like anywhere from an hour to two hours or three hours where there's nobody there. And she noticed last week she got to work and there was a note, all this stuff she's supposed to do besides open the window and do everything else because 
this other person has to go work at another post office. Yeah. So back in the day, I remember people were clamoring to get a job at the post office. You're right. And, and now, and it's not that people don't want to work. It's just a whole new ball game at the post office. Now, no matter what you do, it's never enough. Two yeah. other incidences. One I can verify, and one I'm just hearing back third and fourth from. Um, I understand Royalton Hill is having trouble getting mail delivered, and they can't get the Herald. They have to come downtown to get it. That I, I I understand. There's this is the one I'm, I can't verify. Roy, Royalton Hill people, for example, cannot get mail delivered. They have to come down here. They can't get the Herald unless they come downtown and buy it. Hmm. And the one I can verify is when uh, you order something to be mailed to you and they that company notifies you it has been delivered to your post office. Two days later, it hasn't appeared. So you call the post office. And this, is, this is fact. They say, well, um, I think we probably do have it but I'll have to look for it. So you go down there immediately, hang the phone up, go down there. There's a pile of delivery boxes and people have to go through it. Oh, here it is. And it was supposed to be delivered like two, three days previously. That's a fact. And I don't know, you know, it's a Fed issue, but it's a local issue. And it seems to me that our legislature, yeah, I'd be able to be putting some pressure on somebody. I mean, so so that's a that's a federal yeah. a federal body. Um, yeah, and and I think I think there's a couple couple things going on here. One is one of course is uh, you remember that um, uh, during the uh, the uh, term of the previous president that they he changed some of the, the people that were appointed to the postal governing body and who were specifically charged with closing down distribution centers. And, and so, and that's a position that cannot be, that the person has to resign from, uh, they can't be fired from. So, uh, so that person is still there and that stuff is still happening. So there, so at the top level, there's pressure to do these things at the, I think at the bottom level, uh, it comes again, back down to workforce uh, shortages and 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 they don't make it easy uh, either and so you know um, and and so so workforce development is an issue is we don't have enough workers to do anything. hardly anything these days uh, so uh, uh, yeah and and some of that is is uh, just a demographic bubble right we have we have we have a lot of retired we have a lot of boomers and we have a lot of uh, you know, Gen Z's it's trying to fill in that gap at the bottom, the but country. we have fewer Gen Z's than boomers. It's across the country. Hmm. The post office thing definitely is, is challenging. And um, I mean, uh, I had I had a medicate, I'm assuming it's medication, was delivered to my mailbox a few weeks ago. That wasn't even mine. It was to somebody that was in, in the um, trailer park. And I immediately brought it down and and uh, actually met the the individual. <laughs> I was gonna put it in their mailbox, and they came out. What are you doing? <laughs> you know, I'm like this got delivered to my house, and they had said that 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 you know they it was over a week ago that yeah. that went missing. You know, like oh. it wasn't like I sat on it for a week. It was got like, right down to the house, and and I think it it sounds like the issue that they're having right now is the money maker part of delivering things is through packages obviously not through mail and what the what the federal government does is they undercut pricing from fedex and yep. ups to get the packages right Which and then they can't now. deliver them. so it's like yeah it, that's the issue and you've got them all sitting there because oh, yeah. our government is undercutting the prices so that the you know the person yeah. says well i can offer it to you for eight dollars shipping instead of ten dollars yeah. And but I and it's sitting there, you know, and 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 I had a package, you know, that I was kind of an urgent package that I was waiting for, that said, oh, it's delivered at your house, and I'm like, well, someone must have stole it because it didn't come here, <laughs> and and I had to go down to the post office three separate times before they finally said, oh yeah, yeah, it's here. We had 
it, but it said delivered, marked delivery. No, I was still sitting in the post office. It's like, but I can only imagine, like, you know, I mean, you think of, and you hit it right on the head. There's so many individuals that not just get it because it's easier, but, but now, um, are waiting for their medication that often because of insurance companies don't let you yeah. take your medication out past 60 days or 30 days. In some cases, you might be down to your last pill waiting for that medication. And if it's sitting in there for four or five days, yeah. you know, you're, they you're in trouble. Yeah. I mean, it's really a problem. And, yeah. and, and it's bad for business. Uh, I actually have one of our local business people who, basically works out at home but but and, and you all know them uh but uh uh but you know and they were uh but they but they rely on the postal service for a lot of their their work that they do and um uh, and it was a problem now they live up uh, uh they live up close enough that they actually their mail goes to Randolph uh, and so their problem wasn't with our post office, it was the Randolph post office. But, but, but each week on front, for, front, yeah. front porch and, forum that somebody's package yeah. is missing. If you know, oh. if it was delivered, then you bring yeah. it to them. For this, for this person, you know, it's just, they, you know, stuff wouldn't get delivered for several days. They'd have to call and then they'd say, oh, by the way, we have it. And, uh, but, but we can't deliver it. You have to come here. So they have to drive all the way to Randolph to get it, it's just, you know, uh, away from work stuff. And uh, yeah, it's a problem. It's a problem for our- And the other thing too, is they don't allow the consumer to pick. So no. like if it was me and I needed something urgent, I'd, I'd get it FedEx or UPS. I wouldn't go through the postal service, but you don't know even if, until you purchase something and then they give you an alert on your phone like a day later saying, oh, it's it's been shipped by this person. And now you're like, oh, great, you know, <laughs> but at least you should have some sort of option, you know, like, would you like to pay $2 more to go FedEx? Yes, I would. <laughs> you know, like, yeah. so I make sure it's there. But like, the upside yeah. of this is you'll get that notice that says they sent it by FedEx. Yeah. And you'll get the notice that said it was delivered. And then you look and it says it was delivered to the it, post office. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's all, yeah, it's all, all messed up. But. This sends it back to the company. Before you even get it, but I think part part of the issue Fix that, Kurt. Fix is the federal government. It's not a federal <laughs> government office anymore. I'll, I'll, a... I'll fix it all. Okay. I'll be better. That's not really good. We know it. <laughs> uh, any other? But I know you're. Well, he's not in session right now, so he can. He, he you could spend some time in the post office, right? Yeah. <laughs> he's gonna start delivering. <laughs> every time we see him, every talk to Take this biennium and don't put a single bill on the wall. Work on the laws we have to make them work. Nothing new. Let's just fix yep. and make work what we have. I mean, how you how you make it, it is you, you have to write a bill to change those bills, but yeah. <laughs> but, but that's not a new bill. That's I mean, a corrective bill. Oh, it's a new no, bill. It's just a bill working on another law. <laughs> but yeah, I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Thank you, Purvis. Well, we thank you for coming yeah. tonight. I know we uh, got you a little later than yeah. you probably yeah. Yeah. Sorry about wanted that. to be here. But, uh, but, always... but one of the things that I, I don't remember if I mentioned this, but um, at the last one I was at, but one thing that I have done is part of the problem with resolving these problems are is, is you know some of these aren't just a judiciary problem and they aren't just a health issue and they aren't just a but but the way our government structured is you know you have the judiciary committee and you have the health committee and you have the economic development committee and and they and they get siloed and they just think about just the stuff that's in their realm and sometimes they feel really really good about themselves if they reach across and do a little thing over here but uh but but so part of what i have done is is uh i just asked and i figured it was mo going to be mostly younger legislators who were going to go for this and it's true uh uh and i was just like can we get together and forget about the silos for a minute and and talk about so what would property yeah, you know, what would funding, what would our schools and the funding for our schools look like if we didn't base it off from what we already have? 
because part of the problem is if you're already starting with a broken thing and you're going to add a new widget to it, you still have a broken foundation. So what if you start to rethink that? And so, um, I don't know, three, four weeks from now, uh, a bunch of folks are, we're just going to get together and, and see if any, any legislative ideas come out of that and how we can start to, to break through some of those, those, those just limited thinking, oh, we have to do it that way because it's always been done that way. And yes, we can. Firing and getting out. There are a bunch of, bunch of them are retiring. You can run. No, I can't. Yeah. Most of them are, most of them are ones that have been there a long time. There are a few that were uh, retiring because, you know, they are young and they got in and realized, oh, I can't be a legislature and pay for my electricity at home. Uh, <laughs> and so, uh, so you know, so they they decided they couldn't afford to 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 do it, and so there's there's some of that too. Are you running? Is there someone running again? Is what against you? Do you know? Is there anyone? I, 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 do not, I do not currently have an opponent. Yeah, I wasn't sure. What about uh, what's his name? Uh, Dick Dick McCormick. Thank you. What's about his seat? Uh, is so there somebody, is somebody running, or is it vacant? Yeah, uh, yeah. So there oh, there there are nine people. Oh, five people. Wow. Nine people. I have got a few. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, it's county politics. I didn't know yeah. five people running for his seat. Nine. There's nine. Nine. Oh, nine. Nine. Out nine. The nine, nine for the, for the, so the primary, nine for the three slots for Windsor County. So the primary in August was sort of primaries in August, and now that will narrow it down to the three and the three. Um, yeah, and people ask me if I would. You know, as soon as he said he was going to retire, if I said you run it for that, I said absolutely not. <laughs> uh, uh, and and the reason is is that. That, you know, I got into it because I want to help towns like Bethel and Rochester and Stockbridge. I want to help little towns. And and if I was a senator, I'd have to care more about Woodstock and White River Junction and Springfield right. and all those because they have they have more voters and and they have different issues than we do. And and so I don't want to. I mean, yes, their issues are important. And as a state lit as overall state legislator. I, I care about them, but I don't care about them as much as I care about the stuff that's going on in small towns. So, so I was like, no, I, I don't want, I don't, I don't think, I don't think I ever want that job. I, I have no aspirations to uh, run for president. So yeah. president, so president of the United States is kind of out of. So you're not doing that. Okay. You're not doing that. <laughs> They're looking. So you know, <laughs> so, could be. Right now, I, it's wide open. That's right. Well, thank you sure. so much. All right. Thanks, Kurt. Do you have anybody else public comment? There's only one other person in attendance. Well, unless Paul's got some. Oh, are you You got Tuckers and Pikes. Yeah, and we didn't have any from Twin State because sometimes we do get material from Twin State. And there was Harvey's, but we bought it in 2023, not 24. Prices are pretty comparable. But it seems like we're paying an awful lot of money. Yeah. We're not paying a lot of money for the distance is coming. But why are we can we buy more from rent? Like, would we pay a hundred dollars or more instead of two hundred dollars or more? You mean from Tucker's? Yeah. Yeah. So it depends what they have. That's the problem. Is you know the the material is not always the same. I, I think the. I want to say, please correct me if I'm wrong. Civ testing is that the is that the correct? I don't no, what's the testing? I mean, even though it, 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 it always seems like there's a lot of people in town are always like, oh, it's Chris Travis Pike. I hear that all the time, but I've never once ever even pushed my product here at the town. Um, you know, nor will I talk bad about somebody else. Yeah. I, I know often the, the comments are availability of product. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know, um, and in trucking. But um, I, and that was I issue. really don't care where we buy everything no, from. And that was it doesn't matter was, to me at all. Yeah, and that was but an issue with us. Doesn't change anything at my work. No, in July of after the July flood, is Tucker's didn't have material, so that was an issue for us. And and it depends what they're you know what they're blasting for a while. They couldn't get their um, pressure, so that was a problem for them. So it does kind of depend. And and the way I look at it sometimes, Brian is. How much is it going to cost one of our guys to put miles on our truck to go do, you know what I mean? To 
how much does it truly cost us for us with three people to go get the material? And as I mentioned to you uh, prior, people were like, what are we stockpiling material for? Well, it was because we had money in the budget and I didn't want it to go into the undesignated fund balance. And the only one who could accommodate the quantity in the time frame in which I needed it, I had to have it here by June 30 or the auditors would have pushed that money out of the current fiscal year, which I didn't want because as I told you, so sometimes we're limited. We do price at twin state um, sometimes and, and a lot of them are very much in the same you know, ballpark. But for us, really, it boils down to availability of the product because we right yeah yep we had three or four good weeks of weather and the roads need to be graded for six weeks yeah and, and right. you see them chocolate so yeah. Well, they were, they've been working on a grant that had to get done that they, they chose to do on DART. So, and, and one of them was on vacation. I think he comes back tomorrow. So AJ obviously just took over. So he does know obviously that the grader needs to be out. And um, so that was his priority, certainly for the week. And obviously when I spoke to him last week, it was obviously weather dependent, but they just, they finished a project. And this morning they were out on DART putting in that big, putting in a culvert. So to kind of finish that project up but you know you're not wrong i mean the prices are there and, and sometimes it's for us it's if we have somebody in the greater then we need to then obviously somebody should be pulling giving them hauling material and we have somebody maybe out with the york rake and we're chloriding and if there's only three of them you know someone hauling on a regular basis is difficult but we do you know we've been buying sand and they will haul from pike and they do haul from randolph center but um you know he needs to follow the rules and pick up the rules along with it to a job. If he can get it for the same price as Bethlehem Mills, he can build it in Bethlehem. If he can get the same price as Bethlehem Mills, get it again down to yeah. Home Depot. Right. He doesn't make seven trips down to Home Depot, pile it down to the Right. and then pick it up and take it to the job site. Okay. Right. Yeah, and, we, and we've left material before and done that. But And like I said, it depends on certainly on the situation um but it also but like i said it depends now i you know aj's you know in the saddle we'll see how this goes i mean then. price is price but I mean, I mean just just like i mean i hate i hate to have to buy lumber around here because it's so expensive but at least the lumber is true you know home depot is definitely more more uh cheaper but then the boards are it'll take me you know six hours to find one straight board you know what i mean that's not even true anymore actually some boards at mills are cheaper than home depot oh, yeah. if you call day to day it's like but, you but can i'm find just saying like that that kind of goes into some of the discussions but whatever it might be it might be gravel or something yeah. else is uh, you know sometimes i can't even get topsoil for another and... three weeks at a twin state no, i mean no, there's no, just no. availability at certain places that aren't exactly it does it and it then whoever's trucking it the truck driver themselves plays into pay, play i mean you get someone that doesn't want to dump the way you want and i mean it's just we hold about twenty thousand dollars material out of harvey's um you know last for the mud and stuff and uh, so it, sometimes it's just is just that simple and mm -hmm. and if you call sherry there's time she'll tell you I, I just don't have it so but we do like we have a great relationship with tuckers great people and Yes, that's a good expression. So, but so yeah, definitely, and we'll, like I said, so now, of course. And right now we got a pile of material, and so yeah. I did not. I did rent it. Yes, because Gary Slack, uh, I I asked him for some historical advice, and he came in. He was great, and he said, "Hey, did you buy that excavator?" I said, "No." I said. You or your son would know he's on the equipment committee. I said, no, we just, we rented it. And the grant is paying for the rental. And he was like, oh, well, I wondered about that. And then he said, well, then I have a second rumor I want you to clarify. I'm like, bring it on. And I can't remember what that one was. And I said, no, that's not right. We didn't do that. And uh,
we could have, but they chose to do the project. You know what I mean? We have a road foreman. They, he chose, they chose, well, well, he wasn't the road foreman at the time. And, but the two of them worked together. They chose to do the project. Um, I gave him the option. And um, so they chose to do the project. And I think they were also hoping the plan was we could get the rental for a month covered by the grant. So we could do extra on the road outside of the grant, but it would have been covered. So I think that that was the, that was the the thought process at the time. So we do have another grant going on now, which we are going to contract out. And I did ask AJ, do you want to do the work or do you want me to contract it? He said, contract it. So, you know, we have a little overlap. And so uh, between the two road foreman and, and, uh, but that was the hope was get the grant to cover it and we could do extra with the equipment, not on our dot. I know. Right. Well, you know, and like I said, they chose to do the project. It was their decision and, and it wasn't, it was, you know, before the road foreman switch. So we'll see moving forward. I, you know, I don't call the shots. They have department heads. They got to run the department. I got all the departments. Well, yeah, it did. But I mean, when they made the pitch to me, it made sense financially because if we could rent the equipment and they could do other things that bent on the road with within that grant that we were getting paid for. So, you know, whether or not it worked out like that, we've never done it before. So, so you know, that was the logic. And so, but I certainly understand what you're saying about hauling and, and, uh, yeah, we're all about saving. Still so got your CDL. You can come come hot. Hey, hey, what's that to do? There you go. Plus, he's busy on the class for I don't don't think that our town has the only issue. So, like, I was, <clears throat> I I kind of have to chuckle about when it comes to public works comments business. Like, I spent a lot of time at board meetings and. I was at two of them filling in last week for paving, usually paving bids and stuff. And both of them I was at, one was up north and one was relatively close to here. And that was the whole thing. It was about our roads are the worst and everybody's else is better. And it's like, huh? can, can you guys come to our meetings? Really? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, but it's like always a common theme. Like, you know, a lot of people are, you know, believe that a good thing their town is the worst and the underpass on it 14 is open oh that's right yeah and yeah. it's beautiful i went down there i, I couldn't I stand it i heard i saw it open so i should i gotta go to i was showing or something i just gotta go through <laughs> don't worry somebody will find out a way to hit that thing. yeah just, it will well, i tell you what they're gonna have to they're gonna have to work at it, it I'm telling you, this will this way. It'll happen. The people still buck 108, even with the zigzags now. You know, they, they figure it out. They got guardrails. Somebody, somebody will hit that with an excavator. I'm gonna, well, I'm gonna the, go with the. the I'm gonna bet the excavator room at this point. Fourteen six. Fourteen six. Doesn't matter. That's a big excavator. You know how many people go haul excavators and they don't measure the height before they go do that? <laughs> I, I'm going with that. I'm going to ask you this. Yeah. Let's take that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they ran into ledge. Yeah. Been there since. What do you know about running the ledge? Yeah. Well, it's happened. It was all. They, you know a lot they built about it all actually. Right? Yeah, it's pretty wild. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there's no way they could travel down the highway with that thing. Oh, uh, pretty pretty neat. I got, got close to it down there, and I said, I know what that guy's doing. I could hear the hammer. All right. So we have fire department policy manual. Yep. So you saw that obviously Gary wrote the manual. I did a little bit of editing for him, but we'll take no credit. It's all Gary's work. Um, so if you don't have any questions, then you're just looking for a motion to adopt. Looks nice. Looks nice. I'll tell you. What the hell is, is that going motion? Here? Second. Okay. <laughs> Jordan and Dave. But the only um, the only question I just kind of had, and it doesn't matter, but mm -hmm. I, I'm just assuming as I was reading through it that he's probably taken this from a template from yep. another agency or something. Uh -huh. Do you know who he uses for like like often we copy things from the league, mm -hmm. right? Like, does he have like a? I gave him all the stuff in Bristol. Okay, well, mm -hmm. I'm just you know, I mean, I just sometimes I was just reading through it, wondering, wonder where he got that, or yeah, you know, oh, he caught I that, gave him the or, template, you know, but he obviously you know reworked it and, and the one i had was a 
I don't know how old it was, but he, cause I took it off their website, but he gave, um, obviously he had to go through and, and what adhered to them, what doesn't and changes and, mm-hmm. and, um, uh, you know, NFBA standards, uh, that sort of thing. So, um, and he wanted to put, you know, obviously he put his own spin on it, what credentials were training the officers needed to have, you know, that differs by department mm-hmm. and how many officers he needed to have. So that was all. No, I thought he did a good job. That was all Gary. She said wondered. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you what, it's uh, an eye opener to me. I did not read it all word for word, I will admit, but I read enough to know that I didn't know anything about the part. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. You know what? But that's really good to know because it's true. It's it's very true. There's so many things that yeah. that are special to them. See yeah. Jordan and Dave. So um all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. All right. All right. Then we have the um, order to reclassify a portion of Gilead Brook Road to class four. Is there a document on that? So we had. Um, okay. We had visited um, the section of road there at the last meeting. So it's really a lot of you know legal about when we did what and what the portion is and, and all that sort of thing and and um so it, we did it's very similar to the one we did for right road for right road um so anyways that's uh, you know, so you would need to um you need to make a motion to reclassify the 0.46 miles of Gilead Brook Road to class four as it's determined that it is for the public good, necessity, and convenience of the inhabitants of the town of Bethel, effective immediately. So I'll move. Second. Any further discussion on it? Did you see it? Did you read it? Did you have any questions? Yeah. Is it still there after the rain event? Sure. <laughs> we were wondering that when we... I did. I wondered because I asked. I like, asked uh, Chris. I'm like, have you been be up? Because I hadn't been up. So, anyway, so here's the signatures. You guys okay. All in right. favor? Aye. 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 Yeah, I thought after the rain, I was like, oh, I thought it was rain. Okay. Oh, good. How is he? Is he? A, is he a junior? Is he a junior or a second or third? Like. Is uh, that did his uh, dad have the same name? It's gonna rain. Yeah, for the next three days. Yeah, but at nine. Oh, okay. At some point, nine, ten o'clock. That's it. Yeah, so I wasn't sure if he was a. I really don't want any rain. He was the original. Oh, I'm working on rain. Son of the, the rain. original. Oh yeah, you bet. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know we were doing all night. I thought it was maybe a family thing, like yeah, maybe his dad yeah. owned it. That's why I was asking. You did. Sure. What the deal was. No, I knew it was I've been to some of these meetings that go to eleven. George. Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, good. He. Uh, well, I did I talk you've been to Phil Hodges? You're out here. You haven't been to the big ones yet. All right. <laughs> all right. Share <laughs> snacks. <laughs> We had the EV charger. So See, somebody I, from the elect, the energy committee is supposed to be here for this? No. I don't think so. No, because I told them I'd look for money. I emailed them and said that I couldn't. And Josh Wardell said that he, um, that I explained it. I said, I can't find any money either. And, and he said um, that what we could do is change the rate. So that remember how we talked about the rate? He said that he would be willing to work with me to, or work to, so that you could set the rate to cover over a period of time the cost of the charger because I don't have the money in the budget. If we get to use that, yeah, we'd have to overspend the parks budget. So I don't have the money for it. I already did. What they say, like last year we could. Well, I reached out to them, but see what happened is GMP. If you wanted it for your house, you'd be good, Thank but because. We want it for a municipality. They had this thing called Recharge Vermont. So GMP had their own website and, and all the money was going to Recharge Vermont. And then they allocated it by county. And Windsor County has already hit its max. So they don't have any money left for Windsor County. So maybe next year. I 
Oh, huh. I don't know. I've never heard that. All I know is that. Well, I, oh, okay. Because I know. I don't know. I mean, I did. I emailed the lady that I usually speak with at GM. I'll tell you about the call because we had a little altercation with Mr. Green Mount Power. And we called the top dog. And all of a sudden, shit happened. Hmm. I mean, because usually, like right now, our person is she's great. Usually, call her, and this happens. And you know, we had the guys on uh, Crystal Drive, Hebert, uh, hand shoveling and zapped themselves uh, when they took the coating off a power line that wasn't buried too deep. <laughs> the funny part is, his buddy decides he's also got to do it. I'm like, stop touching it. You know, <laughs> it's just so we, I'm like, good lord. I gave him lady's name. She called. I they text called her, and she had somebody right there um to to deal with it and i don't know it ended up being some underground thing and it went up somebody's driveway and i was a little confused but it wasn't in conduit so they wrapped it and and dealt with it and it was weird i i don't know but anyways um so yes i did reach out to gmp but but yes uh so the recharge vermont program if we had gotten it in sooner and, and although josh had been talking to them for quite a while and he thought he was going to get in and then they said oh sorry closed um we've given out all the money for your county so so this you know like can he bring in the research to say that if we charge x amount of dollars if it gets used 20 percent of the time it, it'll pay itself back he could i mean at the time he mentioned it in an email it said he could do a he could do a spreadsheet. And I'm like, look, let's just see if the select board wants to do this. I'm like, it's not a big deal. If you're saying that we can recoup our money over a period of time, which is what he's saying. I'd rather see a real charger going next year as opposed to. As opposed to this. He did. They did trying say something small. Test. Like, let's just do the real thing. Yeah, but, It was a test, he said, as they explained to you all, to see if you know, if it would help businesses or whatever. I'm just saying I don't have the money, I but agree. if we can- I agree with you. The rates, the then right, well, I want to work with GMP to, to to make it happen and use grant money to make it happen, but paying up front for 10% of what we really want to do so that we can do it now as opposed to waiting and maybe getting the means to do it correctly and, and just- you know, I think it would get used. I just maybe we try a little harder to do, to make it happen. They could certainly, but, uh, if Recharge Vermont is if they get funding again, then maybe the they list, could so. stay in the queue. Right? I'm not sure that would be something that we could ask them. To I'd do. be interested to find out all that mm -hmm. before just, just tossing money in the wind just to. Right. I mean, a part of, a part of me is curious. You know, I, I mean, I think if we were going to test something out, this seems to be the reasonable solution, right? It's not like this huge investment of a fixed utility that we're putting in there. It's, you know, we could yank it out, do away with it tomorrow, right? Um, so I'm kind of curious, like, how would it work, you know? How would it be used? Would it not be used? Would it cost us money? Would we make any money? But then, a part, then most of me, like, and this is what I've said for years, is... I just don't think the town should be in the business of charging cars. Um, I And if it is so lucrative, like people say, why, why are the gas stations not installing? Like, and the only reason why the one in Randolph has two of them is because they got money from the state to put those in when they made that a, uh, a rest area. Um, but, you know, if that's so lucrative, then why don't the other gas stations, like, I, mean, I guarantee if it's a moneymaker that these guys would have that and thing installed have, tomorrow. And, like, and wouldn't they, they? grant ability to do that. Yeah. Remember, we and sent it to them for McCullough's. Like, McCullough's got, got McCullough go. has area to do it. I mean, the you know, Champlain Farm's kind of tight there, but I'm sure they can make something work. And But nobody's doing that, you know? Ripping their pumps and stuff out right now to put in new ones. That'd be the perfect time. And then the tough oh, thing. that's right. right. That's right. And then the tough thing, like we talked about before, is, you know, and who manages it? And I know, yes, it's just like, you know, the kid that gets a new puppy. I'll take care of it. I'll take care of it. But what happens when those people aren't here? And then who takes care of it, right? It's, you know, it's definitely not going to be me. And it will probably land on your lap somehow. Um, but who takes care of it? Who polices it? Who 
who goes through the billings once a month or yeah. figures out are we losing money making money or 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 whatever mm -hmm. and i just i gotta think that there's yeah, yeah think you'd obviously have to charge enough to cover the rate would be to cover the electricity to cover the wattage so you know that. Like, and then it's don't see this being a good test and i gotta think at the end of the day that's going to charge and at the end of the day the only person that's going to probably make it on this is somebody that lives right here with an electric vehicle that will plug it in you know what i mean like i just don't really see this i don't, I don't, see, we don't see it bringing people into town okay well not not Airbnb when there's Airbnb. a bunch of them around you know i mean Airbnbs are big people staying in the area well we can grab pizza and we can charge the car real quick and and quick i mean i don't, I don't see anybody sitting here for three hours shopping or right they said it would have to be that they would only get a little boost that they would they would have to sit yeah, there that's 10 percent or something mm -hmm. I, would, the I would like to see the what they're proposing option. is is the same as like we have at our at our house it's not it's not the fastest it's mm -hmm. not the slowest. no yeah it's like it's level two mm -hmm. i know we've used the ones down at uh Green Mountain Mount Power. Bays. We've used oh. the ones at Dartmouth. We've used the ones at the parking lot. We've used the ones up on by eighty nine and Grand. Oh yeah, by the oh, at the barn or by Rinkers, as we would say. <laughs> I mean, or or we had talked about well, we. I know some of us that were on the committee a while ago. Maybe Paul remembers. You know, when when they first had done this, was talk about what about our energy committee reaching out to some of the area businesses about maybe helping them get through the to install something like this, like yeah. work with Champlain Farms to get one installed or McCullough to and I think they work something out there. We GW. talked about GW Plastics at the GW. time, of course, it's in a lot now. And as policing goes, there's you know, none that needs to be done except the company that puts it in. Right. Well, they're well, saying they'll buy it for the and doesn't it move, then it's just well, no one else. Different, that's a different issue. Well, I think that's what it is. For, for, well, there could be a lot of things. Yeah. It could be, you know, uh, billing things internally somehow we have to they no but steal it. but if we want to be accurate we would have to right? no how much no. how much electricity is it costing us a month are we yes. how much revenue did we take exactly. in is it worth it no, someone's got to look at that no, and then no, what right there when they get you know the the thing is like we see this park you know all it takes is someone who they plugs in it. that forgets that it's plugged in for you know Two days, three days. I mean, it's like the the vehicles oh, the that need to get charged. shoveled out, or somebody could steal. If it. someone else wants to, use it. you know, charges. So set it for yeah, but then nobody else would be able to use it, though. Right. Yeah. yeah. Trivia night at right. Age and everybody. Yeah, in this the is in the, in the like, like a software platform, and it's you know nothing, and it's good for three years and parking spot. So. And, and I know last time the fixed facility or fixed one infrastructure ones, we were more like. How would we even manage this thing, you know? And and we were talking about a huge cost difference between a level one and a level three, right? And we oh, yeah. and and then the interstate was gonna put in 20 of them up there, level yeah. one. So we were like, it didn't make any sense for us to even have one at that point. Mm -hmm. Um and now GMP has put some in right yeah. down here. Yeah. They have some and I've seen cars there. Yeah, they got like one of the more supercharger ones there. And they'll probably have some of the hotel ones. But oh, I, right. I just wonder, is it more of a I guess a lot of times what I see the energy committee or some of our other committees is more not necessarily having to do something for the town, but working with citizens or business owners of the town to be able to do things at their home. Like, like, you know, they could promote this unit to, you know, some of our area businesses to try to get that maybe babe or they get a spot. They could, mm -hmm. they could set one up, you know, mm -hmm. or like, you know, those, it's kind of like window dresser, you know, it's like those different things is how do we work with the citizens rather than, Let's build something that we have to take care of. Um, but I'm also kind of curious if it'd work and if you'd make any money or lose money or, you know, how mm -hmm. that would even look like. So. Well, I'm not sure you would, you wouldn't lose money other than your initial investment because you charge enough to make your electricity back. And hopefully, so the only money you could possibly lose is the $1,550. So obviously that. Well, there's got to be no, that, if I take it out of the park, and stuff you have to pay for. And, right. right. Subscription is all covered for a certain amount of time. Like Three years. Is paid to be part of it. Mm -hmm. 200 bucks a year. So, but you could budget for that down the road if you chose to. But the 1550 um, you know, it's too small to take out of a capital fund because you just wouldn't capitalize such a small expense. And if I spend it all, I'm obviously going to blow my 
parks maintenance budget. There's the only place I could think to take it out of. And um, whether or not you'd recoup this money in a year or over three years, you know, I don't. So. Or you wait until there's grant money available, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure at next year it'll get reset. Possibly, yeah. Um, I, I mean, if this is their goal until whatever, 2035 or whatever it is, I'm sure they're going to. Hey, yeah, the, they could also fundraise. Yeah. Who painted right. the graffiti over under the bridge? Who covered that up? The state. You mean under the River Street Bridge? Yeah. Yeah, state of Vermont. Huh. That's theirs. Yep. Yep. Um, I don't know if he's fixed the wall yet, but they were on the commission. So that you could, there was a fundraising policy for the, you know, so, but uh, anyways, I, I don't know. So what are you going to do? So what are we going to do as a board? Anybody want to make a motion to move forward with it, or I can't. I can't. I can't. I wish they'd come. Really, but well, I mean, they gave you all the information last time. Um, I didn't ask them to come. I right. could certainly ask for a rate table if that would help, and have them come to a future meeting if that's what you're waiting on. Um, if that would help you make a decision, I'm happy to do that. I mean, what are the biggest questions that we have as a board? My question is, I don't see it getting used anywhere near enough. Okay. To, to More of a funder. Okay. So using? Dave doesn't think it's going to get used. Okay. I think, I think it's the financial management side of it. Okay. The month, month to month. <clears throat> excuse me. The month to month, uh, looking at the billing and making sure that we're getting paid properly. The administrative side of it is still questionable. And and it really is, a, it's almost a beta site because uh, there aren't any other installations that we can refer to um, for a, any kind of a historical data on it. Jordan, Denise? I'm on the fence and I, I could see it both ways. I just... It's fifteen hundred bucks, and I'm sure you'll make fifteen hundred bucks back over three years of somebody using it. So, I don't know. Would it help you to make a decision if you did see a rate table, or not really? Yeah. I mean, compared to what what you pay at home compared to what we'd have to charge here. I, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not. No, I just I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah, same with me. I agree with a lot of what Paul said. Get the financial stuff figured out. Well, which is you know, I, I'm not. Yeah, I guess we'd have just, to spend some time on the website myself or Pant or how much Pant. do we charge down the road for the quick charge compared to what we'll have to charge? And I, yeah, it comes down to money at that point. So if they can, so it sounds like a majority of the board is financially driven, you know, either how much the investment or managing the investment. But you'd support it next year if they got grant for it. Yeah. So if it was a freebie? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'll send them an email and see what they want to do. But I wouldn't not support this. I just would like to know the financial half of it. Yeah. And the thing is, too, is we'll have to wait for Pam to get back and spend some time on their website, I mean, to figure out, I can't imagine it's that difficult to use. I imagine it's somebody charges it, they it's, put in their information. Yeah. It's probably, uh, yeah, I'm sure it's, you know, I'm not too concerned. I'm sure about once that. a month you get a statement. Right, exactly. Sure I, I don't get a check that says this but is how much. Yep, just how much are you going to charge right here compared to down the road and how much yeah. solar is it? And Yeah, and 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 Josh, you know, um, offered to do that. So we could, okay. I can take him up on that and then ask him, um, you know, a couple of these other questions, if they have historical data about somebody have one nearby, how much do they get it used? So I can, I'm happy to ask them some information. Okay. Thank you. Great. Sounds good. All right. Review select board goals that we had set aside in March. So, um, I got, I will speak up saying that I have, uh, you didn't have to have one. I didn't have, I had one of my own, Sorry. but apparently I'm not in that loop. So there if some, that, if there's something else that needs something, I would try to find some time to help. Okay. So Denise got the 
she has the traffic ordinance and the trash ordinance. I gave her the trash ordinance today. Chris and I met with AJ on Thursday to start the gravel road maintenance plan. Paul is now uh, working with the, uh, about one thing that uh, was the newer emergency shelter container. I'm not sure where you stand with your human services thing. Well, we, I contacted some of the members and they're doing their summertime vacations and things. So I think uh, toward the end of August, we'll be getting together to uh, stop to take that apart. And, and uh, I've done a lot of historical, you know, historic data collecting on where it all started and how it all got to be where it is now. So um, toward the end of August, uh, we're gonna try to get together and uh, see what we can do. As far as the container goes, I did have a good uh, conversation with Chris the other day um, at the school. Not this Chris. And, no, not, not that this Chris. <laughs> Chris Gray. Uh, yep. And so we're, we're going to, I'm going to re uh, resurrect the search for containers. Back when I did it originally, there were no containers available it was back in COVID time. But I did a quick website search, and there are certainly more outfits out there that have containers available. So we just have to figure out what size we need, and I'm going to make some calls and try to get that back on track again. And Jordan and I haven't got the data. I don't think we're going to get the data on uh, energy audits until fall, but you've been dealing with uh, uh, certainly the Windsor County Sheriff. And I gave you something today that I found yeah. out a legislature change. And uh, I didn't put anything on the agenda. I did. Did you get the email I sent you about the link to the, um, I yeah. sent it to you and I, I, get, and I just haven't had a chance to, to dig in. Again, uh, but, and then I was going to have a meeting with, Important. Yeah. Yep. The commander of the, the road. Yeah. So it's kind of middle manning all the departments in the area to come together and try to work towards the same goal. Well, what I thought was really interesting about the site for the um, neighborhood watch was, you know, we'd had a conversation about having an email where people yeah. could, but this is an app. Yeah. And, and if, and it sounded like your town we could partner with Windsor County. Mm -hmm. So if he's willing to be in the app, then it saves you from being the middleman because people can upload this data into it. So it did, and it was a free app. So it did, that's why I sent you the link saying, hey, I'm tapped out. I couldn't do any more that week to, to look into it. And I was curious if you get a chance, maybe that's something that Royalton could use, uh, the Windsor County Sheriff could use and, and maybe even BSP. And then you kind of have they all have a database. Um, so it, it was it just curious to me because it would save you the hassle of reviewing how many emails a day, you know? Yeah. And uh, so I did go for a ride along with the sheriffs in town. Oh. And were you on the high school? Did you get to arrest suit? somebody? No, that I was, was in the middle of a, a sports meeting at that point. Otherwise, I would have been <laughs> around. But uh, that was Royalton. I ended up catching them. Well, they went down my street to about yeah. like 55, 60 miles an hour. All bumpy, bumpy they went up and down it. Christian Hill a few times. Yeah. And girl jumped out. And yeah. so I did talk to the chief. But uh, the curve today. yeah. So down here, um, I mean, it, it was, I was, we were in town for four to five hours and then we went out to Sharon, but uh, in town, it was I, he just one right after another, stop after stop after stop, and each stop takes anywhere from fifteen minutes to a half hour. So when he's got two and a half, three hours a day here, it, it's not it's not enough to do anything. I mean, that's just stops, and then you're asking him to put in time behind the scenes to work other crimes in the area, and you know. So then you may have hours. to really look at budget time going to a full time. 24 hours is going to cut it. It's just. Yeah. So. And I mean, and that's a huge jump from what we had. And yeah. uh, But you're right. That right. I mean, so. we had quite a bit, but it just wasn't being used. And then, but yeah, but they're not charging us for the court time and they're not charging us for training time and they're not charging us for 
So, I mean, at a certain point, it, it's a decent deal. It is a deal because they're also all carrying insurance and, all the liability. Right. If someone, you know, if they, it's their responsibility who gets trained. They have to make sure they're up to date with all the state, you know, policies. It, it is. I agree with you. I think that definitely contracting out policing is a smart move. And during that so time, he wasn't, he wasn't in town trying to give everyone a hard time either. I mean, it wasn't like pulling over every single person and giving them a ticket. I mean, there was, hey, you know, this is a warning. There was a lot of warnings given yeah. there. I mean, yeah, he was very yeah, fair and reasonable. Yes. And if they were treating him right, then, you know, it was. Having the bad. presence in town has made a big difference because before we didn't even have any presence in town unless Oscar was driving through Bethel to go to Royalton. And then he might pull somebody over because they were there and he was there. Yeah. But now, you know, they could be coming through here to go to another town, but people see him going through town. They don't necessarily have to be stopped. So, you know, the fact that they're even driving through here to go somewhere else. Yeah, I mean, and then there's Bolo calls coming up 107. I mean, erratic, drunk driving, coming this way. Uh, it, there's there's a lot in Bethel that you wouldn't think was here, and it and it it's is. a major thoroughfare to get over to. It's New York all City. here, and whether everyone sees it or not, it's very much so. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, I think you know the local law enforcements are having to do more nowadays because you know, just I mean, like we talked about, Bethel was always under the umbrella. Nine, they're short nine, not so like. Bethel was it's always kind of always under the umbrella of the Vermont State Police. I mean, they were right there. We had a lot of, you know, stuff that was never charged to us directly. And but not just are they short, but now, you know, more things are coming to the local level because, you know, Orange there's County not as many short. of them on duty. Yeah, I met with the Orange <clears throat> County Sheriff as I, we sold him the cruiser and. He's got like he was telling me how many people he has to have set aside for the court, how many has to have covered there. He can be a floater. And he's like, he doesn't have people. And um, so he's super short. So he had to give up Brookfield's contract. So Windsor County Sheriff took over Brookfield's contract. And then he said that they wanted like 20 hours or so much hours in the summer, and then it's gonna taper off in the winter. And so, I mean, Windsor County Sheriff's is growing because he's taking over more and more communities. Yeah. He's got Tunbridge, Chelsea. He's taken over a lot of Orange County. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. And uh, George Contos, uh, the the sheriff, was a very nice man and kind of let me know what was going on there. And he's, you know, he's he said, I think I pay well. I just it's hard to get people. And then I heard Randolph maybe struggling. I'm not. That was. I think uh, the good thing is that you know we've at least started the process over of enforcement in the area. Um, I wonder. Part of the problem is what we were just talking about earlier was the judges and let them go. So I mean, that's people, they, the they're they maybe getting paid enough, but they're not being appreciated for the amount of job for the job they're doing and the risks they're taking because they just now this guy got off the got off the road because he was a DUI, whatever, going to kill somebody. Uh, he gets back on the road before the cop gets his paperwork done. Yeah. All right, so select board girls are moving forward. Um, so when do we want to check back in on those? Sounds like September is what I'm hearing from the folks about start being on vacation. Okay. Maybe by then we'll have our data from that. Um, energy audits to Jordan. Okay. Town manager's report. Um, so the pre bid meeting for the stormwater construction, um, <clears throat> excuse me, is out, and the paving portion of that also is out now. Paving pre bid is set for July 26. Bid for Sam Hill, Sand Hill, the construction portion, are due July 30th. Um, also, it looks like the water project is so it's moving along, but we're going to be have to extend because the directional boring under the railroad has been delayed due to no response from the railroad and the new well house on Pleasant Street 
um, isn't going to be rebuilt until Minash has all the parts because we just don't need that thing offline any longer than it has to be. It may have to have a little bit of a redesign because um, there's an issue with the power. We've had uh, Green Mountain Power out there. We've had Harmony Electric and we're buying a, a uh, I, I want to say the word bucking, but that's not right. Like some sort of some sort of uh, device that will help manage the three phase into the building. So I can't remember what it's called. A maybe I can't remember. But anyways, it's so we have it ordered. It's coming, and so we need to put it inside the building. It'll be outside for now, but up on blocks to stay out of you know any flooding. But so we may have to redesign the building a little bit. The current uh, electrical engineer for Aldrich Elliott is re is re. It, it, so looking at it. So you've got your conditioning, the power or something? Because yeah. Because we have GP, GMP has been there, so we have three phase, and it's not the pump on the motor. And I don't know why the word bucking is stuck in my head. That's probably not at all, but I can't remember what it was called, and I should know because we had a couple meetings about it. But anyway, so the redesign, we're waiting for two reasons, but one of them is Minosh is the biggest reason. We need to make sure that they have the parts before we pull that thing. Uh, the pump. So that's where we're at with that. And um, with the water project, uh, you saw the letter from OSHA the, with the proposed OSHA rules that the comments. Uh, so that was an undertaking and a half. Um, so we got that done. Uh, FEMA, obviously, Finley Bridge is out to work. Woodland's complete. And Richard is working on estimates for the Bethel Mill stump pump station. Tax bills are out. Um, I hired catching property maintenance to finish mowing for the season because we've lost two people. So I obviously can't keep somebody on a lawnmower. Um, uh, Sumner does want a contract. I told him I would have to, you know, it'd be a budget issue for the select board. And then I asked him if he was interested in our lawnmower. I'm like, I'm just going to sell everything and get out of the mowing business. And, <laughs> and uh, he said he was interested in a couple things, maybe the mower. So I told him to just mow for the summer and talk about it. The select board. So, and it's difficult because when you have this in between person, you can't hire a 16 year old to mow anymore because of labor laws. So they have to be 18. And then if you have someone who's mowing and they also have a CDL, so they're working part time, the wage is just, you know what I mean? So it's just we should have talked about that with Kurt when he's here. Why, why is there labor laws? And yeah. like <laughs> the labor laws were put into place because there was underage kids, kids taking adults' yeah. work, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And and now there's a help wanted sign everywhere. Like where the hell were they when they were five years old? You know what I mean? <laughs> Let you work. <laughs> That's right, exactly. You were getting a work Let ethic. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Like it, yeah. it's like, why even have that anymore? I know. Like I told Richard, I said, listen, if this half peak continues, you're going to have to teach me how to run the zero turn. And he said, you know what, Trace, you probably like it a few days a week. He said, no, you just put your earbuds in and mow. I'm like, hmm. So uh, anyway, so we're we're being mowed. Uh, I don't know. Has anyone seen the roadside mower? I'm not sure if they've come yet. or yeah, come up on our All right. Well, said, last time I knew they were in Stockbridge. So yeah, we're obviously, they went by, but they're, they're on. And, okay, good. So they're they're headed about. And um, we did win the bid, so we did get a used fire truck. So we will be picking it up on Wednesday. We bought it from the town of Norwich. Um, we'll see. It, it needs some things. So when I submit it to the state, it will include the price plus things it needs to be so we can be reimbursed for that. So uh, it was great to thank Gary for his work on that. And, and Ron. Or no, action. no, no, no. It's just smaller stuff. No, no. It already had been pump tested they had the results because norwich had, had it pump tested in june so no forty five thousand. um he was very happy with it they road tested it so um it should be you know it, obviously we need we need something in that term uh we also have been working on bid specs or or i say we gary has i've read them and you know did the best i could wrote a cover letter for him um we had been working with uh dingy um, Larry Dingy, unfortunately, our condolences to his family, passed away unexpectedly on July 4th, but his daughter runs the business and, and they still want to, um, you know, bid on the truck and stuff. So we do have, we will have bid specs out that are going out. And um, so we'll have results of that and be able to issue that 
um, get the truck going. I think that'll be in August. Yeah. So uh, the bid specs will go out in July and then we'll expect bids back in August. So, um, you know, Gary's been doing That's still two or three years out, right? Yeah, well, they'd be dingy would if the dingy was the bidder, they'd be two. faster, It'd probably be two. And, um, you know, Gary uh, being, you know, Gary obviously talked to dingy about, you know, this could be the memorial vehicle that got lost because he did create the specs so um we'll see how that goes um, but certainly our condolences to the dingy family i'd met larry a couple times he was a very nice man um town clerk wants to remind everybody that the primary is tuesday august 13th 2024 uh you can get an absentee ballot now just give a buzz and um voting will be from 8 a.m to 7 p.m we anyway, are um, all about it on the 30th, guys and girls. There you go. Mm -hmm. We have a BCA meeting. That's right, a BCA meeting. That, there you go. What's your name? So that's it. Um, That's all I have for the town manager's report. I'm out that week. Guns up. Right, that's it. I have, uh, Um, that's all I got for the town manager's report. All right. Select board meeting minutes from the 8th of July. Any corrections or are we good to... Prove as amended or prove as written. Uh, prove as written. Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. All right, Paul, I'm going to see if you caught this one because you're usually the one. Did you catch the error in the um, the rec committee's notes? I did. The goof, oh. the goof, yeah. <laughs> the goofball. <laughs> I thought she was going back to the future here. I think she did it a couple of times. Too. She had her date, uh, 3034. <laughs> yeah, I was going to ask him. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. So I did give you that. Yeah, the, the OSHA submission. Uh, All right. I was going to get one over on Paul, but yeah. it's it not happening. Not today. I saw that one this weekend. So I'm going to get Paul on that one. All right. What's that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Excuse yeah. me. That's what we say. There was a few of them on there. Oh, did oh crud! Oh, it still says four fifteen. She never told me that you called. Yeah, it was probably just a zippo from the last. It was. Oh, you usually usually you usually email me so I can fix it. That was all you got. Yeah. Right. Should have told yes, me. We did that. <laughs> Email me. Uh, yeah. Just have it. We carried over from. You have an executive right session. We were just seeing if you would stay. Yeah. I don't. I that's me. It's so, great. any other business come before the board before we enter into executive session? See, I tell you, I just write it down. So we have um, uh, just. See. So Chris, um, I I won't be able to be there for the executive session, obviously, but I still I haven't received that uh, revised valuation. You didn't get it? No. no. You can be in oh, the executive I, session. I had some issues with email earlier in the day, but you can be in the executive session, Paul. I can boot Orca Media out and just keep you going. I think. Can you do Please that? Don't. Unless you were trying to get out of it. Sense. Well, no. Uh, <laughs> we can try. I can try. Okay. All right. See ya. Thanks, See ya, Brian. Brian. Thanks. Yeah, we I were unfortunately. I was having. We were having. Um, well, my company. <laughs> this morning, my. I didn't get one. So our company was one of the companies that got affected with some of the Microsoft stuff. Oh yeah, and we—I didn't have anything until about three o'clock this afternoon. I, I it, it it made it look like we did have it. Mm -hmm. So anything that we have is just sitting was sitting in limbo, like spinning, you know, out there in the ether. Um, so I apologize on that. I mean, nothing was different than what we had talked about. There we so, go. So, um, just need a did we put a motion to no. just need a motion to enter executive session and discuss the evaluation, town manager. So moved. Okay. 